broadcasting from their world headquarters in Texas. It's the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show, the show that discusses arcade repair, restoration, news, and more. Now, here are your hosts, Tim and Jonathan. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 16 of the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show. My name is Jonathan Leung, and I am uh, with, as always, uh, the man to my left, Mr. Tim Peterson. Tim, how are you doing? I'm good. Good. So, uh, guys, we want to thank everybody for joining us. We started a little bit later, Tim, just about five minutes or so. So uh, we thought want to thank everybody for holding on uh, during that little five-minute interlude, interlude that we have. And, Tim, it looks like we have a lively live chat over here I tonight. I see that. So. There you go. So I uh, thank all of you guys for being here, and remember that you can answer that you can ask questions during the live show in the live chat, and we will try to answer them to the best of our ability while we're going over the questions that we already have pre-prepared, right, Tim? Right. So first off, Tim, how are you doing? How are I'm, things going? I'm good. Everything's going great. Now uh, you had a special trip since I got to talk to you last in person, anyway. Yes, I made my second trip, third trip to California. Very nice. And I was out in the San Jose area was actually in Menlo Park, for those of you who are familiar with out there. Okay. And worked out past Oakland in Pinole. Okay. And did a game install out there. So we are we got something about that coming up pretty soon. Well, um, now let's talk about some of the games that you did out there. Was there anything new or exciting that you saw in your travel to California? Yeah, there was a few newer type. Most of them were kitty rides or redemption stuff that I didn't, probably not worth mentioning. Just a newer version. Uh, I did notice that Chuck E. Cheese bought a crane machine. Oh, nice. Uh, which, if so is you, it like a Chuck E. Cheese branded crane machine? It, or? No, it was uh, made by ICE, okay. I-C-E, and it's called the Cube, and all they have are these knobby balls that it picks up, and it's short. It looks like a cocktail table, so you actually play over it, and it's sitting down. It's kind of all glass, and it, you just move a crane. But I thought it was interesting. If you've ever been to Chuck E. Cheese, you notice we don't normally have crane machines. But now we do. We so we're does it pick one. up actual prizes or is it tickets? It or? picks up a, a knobby like ball. Okay. And that's, all, that's all the choice you got. But I've heard that Does the knobby eventually... ball have like ticket? Like does it have a ticket value no, or just that's just what a, it is? Just a ball. Okay. So anyway, it's pretty easy to win. Okay. I, I won a bunch of them. Any other cool games that you saw? One in particular that I really liked was, looked like a new dance game. Okay. Like a dance game. Yeah. It, like DDR or something like kind that. Kind of like a DDR because... I helped put it together, and it was I had a a platform looked like a dance floor, but it's really unique in the fact that there are no wires going to the platform. Okay. Which piqued my interest because I kept wondering how we were going to hook it up, and uh, I believe you uh, have some pictures, Johnson. I do. So why don't you tell the people what the name of it is before we continue on here? It's called Magic's Floor. Okay, I'll go ahead and show it here for everybody. And um, as you can see there in the picture, it, I say it's a dance game. It looks like a dance game. The, the game that comes with it is actually more of kind of a whack-a-mole. Right. These little aliens are popping their heads up so, so Tim, and you step on them. Now, from the, the photos here, it looks like it has a projector that projects down. Yes. Okay, on the floor. Yes. And then you interact with the screen on the floor. Correct. So that so I got all that correct. Yes, there's a projector in there and I thought I'd never I would never see another projector in a arcade game again uh, you know we kind of went through an era where a lot of them had that well you know what now with like LED projectors you know you don't have to worry as much about bulbs and things like that you still have bulbs but it's a little bit different than it used to be right right but somehow it notices um, those are not any kind of special tiles they actually came uh, or come from Home Depot <laughs> and they're the kind that snap together okay so, they, and so, so actually, it's just a white floor gotcha that's all that is it's more for the projection of it and I guess it motion captures you somehow and and knows where you are um, I don't know how it all Probably works infrared but, or something yeah kind like of that. an infrared or like type the connect or whatever you have uh, Tim we're gonna take a pause here for just a second I'm gonna adjust the microphone so okay bear with us guys Okay, we're back. Okay, so Tim, this thing is really cool, and I have never heard of or seen this thing ever. I never uh, had dealt with this company. I think this is the only game they have. So wow. It's kind of like they're wanting to get into the industry. So is the company Touch game, Magics? Yes. Okay, Touch Magics. And um, they uh, actually, some guys I know from Chuck E. Cheese helped design it and come up with some different ideas uh, to hopefully make it stable and, you know, 
we don't have to work on it a lot. I hope so. We'll Very see. nice. Oh, I think it's an, a crazy concept. I mean, well, I would have never thought you'd see something like that in an arcade. The, yeah, the thing was, as soon as they were done, done installing it, kids were all over that. And you can play with friends sure. because you can kind of tag up with a bunch of friends and you can't, can't miss anything. You right. get a lot of tickets. There you go. So um, the reaction of watching the kids play is what really had me excited. I was like, this is a cool idea and a cool game. And maybe a lot of other ideas could come out of this, you know. Awesome. Well, I mean, that something very unique. The Magic's Floor. It's yes. called the Magic's Floor for Arcade. Yes. So and you go. can. That's a, a that's a picture at Chuck E. Cheese right there. The one that some, we had here. I'll throw it back up yeah. here so people can see it. So now this is not at every Chuck E. Cheese, right? No, but they. Uh, while we were in California, most of the newer store, the new game packages were coming with one of these. So I assume that your Chuck E. Cheese near you may have one already or be getting one. Sounds great. Well, thank you for the update, Tim. Is there anything else you want to say about your trip to California? Well, uh, was quite an adventure. Okay. Uh, we were in Menlo Park, which if most people may not know, those who live there, of course, know that is home of Facebook. Uh, Facebook employs a lot of people. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> and uh, it's a very expensive place. I stayed in the most expensive house I've ever stayed in. Wow. I didn't say it was the nicest house I've ever seen. I <laughs> just said it was most the expensive. most expensive. Well, here's the deal. That doesn't really have to do much with arcade topics. Right. So let's so save we'll that save for, that for the, the after show. I was about to say. But, um, yeah, it was just a good time and got to see some... Uh, there's a couple new water games. Uh, they, even though it wasn't a new game, it was new to them. Had a, a Pac-Man Battle Royale. Oh, there you and go. And a four-player so that was fun to play, and you know I had to test it really good. Now you mentioned something about a run-in with, with police. Well, there was a uh, if you guys who are older and remember the show Chips stood for California Highway Police Patrol. I did have an incident with them. Uh, I, let's just say maybe the company shouldn't have rented me a Mustang to drive. There you go. <laughs> now, but we'll after talk show. about that later. After show, right? Yes. Yeah, non-arcade related, right? Non-arcade okay, related. Okay, after show is where it is. So if you want to find out more about Tim's uh, what encounter with the California Highway Patrol right. or with the nicest house or the most expensive house he's ever stayed in, stay tuned in the after show and we'll talk more about those topics. Is that yes. good? Sounds good. Good. Okay, let's continue on here then. Let's get on to the questions. Now, Tim, I'm perusing the live chat over here. And I don't see, I, I don't think I see anything in particular. Uh, we do want to say hi to everybody out in the live chat, of course. But you know, Michael says, had someone restore my track and field and they ripped out my PCB and wired in a JAMA cheap multi-game. Now I fixed my PCB and had have the Konami to Jamma adapter, but need a wiring harness for my track and field help. Oh, wow. Oh, man, that is a rough predicament. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, th that really, that is really not a great thing. If you guys are repairing games for people, repair the game as it is. Don't 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 convert it to Jamma and put a multi in it, right? right. I mean, unless you tell the customer that's what you're uh -huh. going to do. Exactly. Right. So, I mean, I, I think uh, Michael obviously had some repair guy that went a little overboard here, Tim. Uh -huh. um, now, he, he's still looking for a harness, I guess, for the track and field. He's using the adapter right now, the, okay. the Konami to Jamma adapter. Tim, I'm not sure if anywhere has those harnesses off the top of my head. Do you? I do not know. Maybe somebody in the chat room knows. I doubt anybody's still selling a new one, but he probably could make one. And uh, maybe we can help him with that later on in the show. We'll talk about it some more. Sounds good. We yeah, got I mean, a question that, that might help, and we'll talk. Maybe I'll bring it in there. Sounds good. So I was just going to look through here. Uh, YouTube Punk's here. Dan's here. Let's see. Super Goya Tim is here. Uh, let's see. Who else we got here? Um, Seahorses at Night is here. Okay. So always mm -hmm. good to have everybody here. Michael, of course, is here. Silly Sausage 72. Any ideas where you can get side art for a Soul Calibur 2? Thanks, guys. So Soul Calibur 2, I mean, we have a list of artwork places on our resources page, yes. Tim, at arcaderepairchips.com slash resources, and we do have an area for artwork that you may, uh, I forget what the heading is off the top of my head, Tim, but we do have several places we do recommend. Game on Graphics with an yes. X, Tim, is one of the places that we that we recommend. Uh, where else, Tim, off the top of your head? I know you've got a couple Well, others. there's uh, Phoenix Arcade. Yep. There's so many that do graphics now and do a good job. It's almost too many to list, but in there may be some that we're not aware of uh, so if as always if you don't see something on one of our links but you trust them or you know them maybe you've been a long time listener of the show let us know so we can also include them after we check them out and YouTube punk actually chimed in said Phoenix Arcade Game on Graphics Sasbo's Arcade those are all places to, to go Sasbo yeah. is probably um, top on my list right now just 
because. Or it's Bose. Is yeah. that how you say that? I always forget. But anyway. Uh, yeah, however you say it. Joe. So, or yeah. Joe. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. So, there you go. There's several places you can get artwork, but our resources page has those places under the artwork heading. So, arcadeapparatchips.com slash resources for a list of artwork places. Well, Tim, let's go ahead and get into our pre-prepared questions. And the first one we have is from Chris. And Chris says, Hi, I watched your video that explains how to adjust the horizontal width coil. Sadly, using the tools doesn't make a make my image any smaller so it won't fit on my screen. You pointed out the chiclet capacitors, so I'm trying to find out what kind of CRT model I have, but I can't find it anywhere. That being said, in the video you use what looks like the exact mo model that I have. Can you tell me what model that is? Thanks, Chris. Okay, Tim, so obviously Chris has been watching our horizontal width coil video. On it. We have one where we show adjusting it. Right. But he's saying it's not making any difference in his picture when he adjusts it. Now, Tim, we're assuming he's using the right tools. Yeah. Okay, so make huh. sure you're using the uh, the actual horizontal width or the TV alignment tools. Right. Okay, which we have a link on our website, too. You can get them from several RK parts retailers right. around, right, Tim? Yes, not an Allen wrench. Yeah, not an Allen <laughs> wrench. Now, uh, Tim, I've heard of people who will remove the horizontal width coil and use an Allen wrench to Once they, unjam it. Yes. You know, like once they've tried to spray some silicone or some uh, WD-40 in there or something like that. But don't do it with the monitor on. Right. Okay, TV mm -hmm. alignment tools, really that's hot. what they're made for. That's exactly. why. So, so, Tim, any suggestions on why his horizontal width coil may not be able to be adjusted or on the chiclet capacitors? And we'll talk about his chassis here in a second because he says he has the same chassis okay. that we have in our video on the horizontal width coil. But just in general, any good ideas on trying to adjust a horizontal width coil as being a little temperamental? Well, you mentioned already sometimes you have to take it out right and you can spray it with silicone wd-40 try to loosen it up uh, rinse it with soap and water you just want to make sure you let it dry really good before um, you know you even attempt to install it but a lot of times when it gets to that stage it's a good time just to replace it right and while you're replacing it you can also do the capacitors in that area I, I laugh because he they are the polypropylene capacitors right. but to me they still look like chiclets right <laughs> or uh trident gum or something in the in the package right that you pop out so anyway um those are some ideas that you can do most of like more than likely they're not that expensive it's a good time to just go ahead and rebuild that area and they even sell a kit most of the time for that a width kit a width kit so um you can try that there you go. So let's go ahead and show this slide here, Tim, so people can get an idea of what we're talking about. Now, Tim, this top image here are polypropylene capacitors. Yeah, okay, that's so the if you're looking at right exactly, if you're looking at your chassis and you're like, what does a polypropylene capacitor look like? This is what they look like. And yeah, they're kind of rectangular, and usually they are a uh, different color. They're not uh, the others on you know the capacitors that we talk about doing a cap kit kind of look like a battery. Right. And these don't. They're flat. And kind of, uh, they always stand up. Everybody's seeing the picture right now probably goes, oh yeah, I know what he's talking about now. Now, Tim, you mentioned that the horizontal width coil may be frozen. You, need, you can try spraying it with silicone or WD-40. You loosen it. Okay, but once you, you've got it loose, you need to rinse it with soap and water and let it dry real good before you put it back on the chassis. Yes, right? very good. I would highly recommend maybe even a couple of days. Just right, exactly. And unless now, you live in Texas, you can put out in the heat and it's probably done in five minutes. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Now, you can just replace it, but the problem is, is that getting some replacement uh, horizontal width coils are hard. Right. Like finding a new one of certain ones is very difficult. So sometimes it's just better to try to, uh, you know, like I said, work with what you have. Right. Now, another option, of course, is to install a horizontal width kit, which includes new polypropylene or chiclet style, like uh, Tim mentioned, capacitors for the ones that are currently installed on your chassis. And Tim, we have a um, we have a link there to the real Bob Roberts and his width kit. Of course, unfortunately, Bob is still not selling right. uh, any more parts. And so until he starts selling parts again you'll have to get your width kits other places yes you may have to make one yourself right you just look at you, you can look at the values of the polypropylene ca caps that you have or sometimes you can find a schematic tim that will show you all of that but you can order the individual polypropylene capacitors if you need to correct now he says tim that the chassis that we use in our video is exactly the chassis that he has in his okay. monitor and his uh, hooked up to his tube right now. And Tim, the one we show on the monitor is a K7000 series 25-inch Wells Garner. Well, so, that's a pretty common monitor. And so. Very common. And so especially uh, especially um, in uh, what that, er, like, what, mid-90s 
uh, yeah. 25 inch game pretty much uh, the wells garner k7000 is what you're going to have yeah and probably so, so if that's what your chassis looks like you've got a wells garner k7000 monitor so there we go so tim anything else before we wrap up with chris's question here? no i think we're done with chris but he can let us know how it works I, I really would like for him to try that and just see if it will loosen up some but taking it out is a great idea just you can get a little more torque and a little it's a little safer to do it that way Absolutely. So, Chris, hopefully it answers your question, and good luck getting the horizontal width on your uh, Wells Gunner K7000 monitor dialed in properly to where it fits the screen. Now, Tim, we've had a couple of questions in the live chat. Uh, do you know something about Galaxian 3 for 28 players? Is something like that still playable anywhere? And, Tim, I've seen the Galaxian 3, like, the setup, uh -huh. but I don't know if I've seen it playable anywhere. For some reason, um, Ground Control Arcade comes to mind, and I don't know if it's because I saw it there or if it's just because it's just a random thought that I had with Galaxian <laughs> 3. I don't know. Maybe. But uh, that may be one place, but I don't know of any other places that would have them, Tim. I mean, I, they're so large, know, you know, there's just, there's not going to be a lot of arcades that still operate it, you know? Right, but you got, even though our Walmart has the Space Invaders game, and look how big that thing is. That is true. So. So maybe uh, some of your newer, maybe a Dave and Buster's or something might would have something that that size. Right, exactly. So there you go. Um, so that's from uh, what Paul Depp. Paul Depp. Okay. So there you go. Uh, Detroit Retro Gamer says, uh, "Hey guys, I'm a Retro Pi Raspberry Pi enthusiast who acquired a Virtual Fighter CRT. Am I to understand to uh, understand a simple JAMA kit would be required to convert the CRT input into VGA? No, not just a simple JAMA input." Right, no. you need you actually need a signal converter from the uh, Raspberry Pi in order to do it. Now, um, there may be some software modifications for the Raspberry Pi that will allow the um, output to be 15 kilohertz. I okay. don't know, Tim. But a lot of times what we would do is we would get a converter board that would convert the 31 kilohertz VGA signal coming out of the Raspberry Pi to a 15 kilohertz signal for the right. arcade monitor. And that board cost about 30 bucks. And you see them a lot on eBay. Yeah, you'll see them on eBay. Um, Gombas uh, makes them. It, they're, it's kind of the reverse of the one where we talk about using a PC right. in a um, in an arcade game. Uh -huh. This is the different. This is the 31 to 15, not the 15 to 30. Gotcha. 31. So I mean, it's a little. Bit, it's the reverse, but they do make it. It's about 30, 40 bucks. So really. You would need a JAMA kit, but the display stuff you'd want to run through that converter so that it would work with your um, arcade monitor CRT. Yes. So there you go. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, you can use a JPEG to hook it up. Now, the only thing is JPEG doesn't convert the signal, Tim. Correct. So, I mean, you um, can use it to hook it up, but you still right. got to have something that's going to convert the signal. Right. So, and that's the kicker. The JPEG will, um, it will amplify the video signal so that it works. But that's why you also use an arcade VGA is because the arcade VGA converts the signal. Unfortunately, you can't use an arcade VGA with a, with a Raspberry Pi. There's nowhere to put it, right? Right. So, I mean, you still need something that's going to convert the signal for you in order to hook it up to a CRT. Okay, let's see. Along with the set, now it says the Pi's resolution to 240p. The Raspberry Pi may be able to do it natively. I don't okay. know that. Okay. Maybe. They may be able to. If it is, that's great. But if not, you will need a signal converter. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, there you go. Um, our Pi-Kate has a 15 kilohertz image for Pi. So there you go. So if you're running our Pi-Kate, that, um, that image for the Raspberry Pi, right. then it'll output 15 kilohertz. You won't need the converted to it. Well, there you go. So that with the JPEG, yes, would get you where you want to be. Uh huh. There we go. Okay, so let's continue on here, Tim, with the pre-prepared questions. And the next one we have is from Colby. And he writes, hey, guys, love the videos. Hey, Colby. There you go. Anywho, I have a 1982 Miss Pac-Man Upright Arcade, and I'm having a little trouble. After watching numerous videos, I still don't know what's wrong. I think it's in the boards. I'm getting sound and video on screen, but the video is all jumbled. I've tried several things to fix it to no avail. Is this something that could be sent to you guys to fix? If I remove all the boards and send to y'all, do y'all fix boards? Thank you for your time. So, Tim, he's not really asking how to fix his board, but he's asking if we fix the boards. Now, Tim... We, we're pretty good with Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man boards, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. we're not taking any mail order board right. repair right now. Uh, there are people who are a lot faster and a lot better than us. Exactly. <laughs> and probably more costly. Um, for us, I mean, we'll do it, but, you know, in a lot of cases, Tim, it's just, I mean, it's just tough with our schedules and everything to take yeah. on that extra work. And so, in your case, Colby, though, the nice thing is that there are a million resources out there for Pac-Man board repair, right, Tim? Yes, that's one game that's pretty easy to find some of the stuff, and uh, Johnson's going to show you some links here in just a second. Now, just where you off can the help. top of your head, though, what are some of those places that you can definitely recommend people go to if well, they need Pac-Man board repair? The first place I always go is the Lawnmower Man page. Right. And if you're not familiar with that, you can Google it, but we're going to show a link here in just a second. That it has a ton of information. It shows pictures and everything. 
and probably exactly what he's describing it'll tell him which chip to replace and stuff it's very uh very good uh, mike's arcade is also really good and uh, then there's some facebook pages this that talk about um board repair and stuff like that that may help our site uh, we don't do a lot of board repair but if you'll go to our resource page you can contact those guys and they may be well, able to help and too. tim if you would have sent us a picture we probably yes. could have narrowed it down pretty probably good. so and so if you want to send in a picture colby and send it to us we'll take a look at it and more likely we can narrow down where the problem is on the board like i said there's enough documentation out there that you can pretty much find it but just to give you some uh, places to go unfortunately we are not taking any board repairs at this time like we mentioned but we do have several people we recommend on our resources page under the pcb board repair and component sales heading so mm -hmm. if you are looking for somebody to send the boards off to then um, you, you can definitely check our resources page again arcade repair tips.com slash resources and go there uh, with all that said miss pac-man boards are pretty easy to work on tim thanks to their age and the numerous resources available check out the links below for some great pac-man repair information tim we have also placed these links directly below in the comment section or in like right above the comment section in the video description right. so you can find these same links here but tim already mentioned the lawnmower man's pac-man page is probably one of the most valuable resources you have for pac-man uh, mike's arcade tim the page that that is is the old arcade game over page okay and that is a valuable resource because tim it shows you a screenshot of what the symptom is and what they did to fix and it and what they did to fix it and so if you compare colby your screen to the ones on the mike's arcade the old arcade game over pac-man troubleshooting page you can probably figure out where you're having your issue with your game uh, arcade archive tim has a nice pac-man uh, version 1.0 guide that shows a lot of tech about miss pac Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man, Tim, same board. Right. Uh, just the daughter board is pretty much the only difference between the two. And so, yeah, I mean, for the most part, Tim, you can find out anything you want to know about Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man boards uh, with just a little bit of research on the web. And I should mention that we fix a lot of boards by just simply cleaning the chips. A lot of them get kind of corroded and stuff. You can find out which chip is your problem. Sometimes taking that out and cleaning it up really good. Um, you know, the legs get oxidized and stuff and putting it back in there. Sometimes you can fix your own board without any parts just by cleaning it really good like right. that. Right, and socketed chips a lot of times like to come out of socket. And so pressing down on chips, making sure that everything's making good connections, checking the legs, Tim, to make sure there's no, like, cuts in a leg or something like that or disconnections. And, of course, Tim, like, just double-checking your solder joints, making sure right. everything's soldered properly. You'd be surprised how many issues you can fix like that. So, uh, Tim, anything else for Colby before we move on? Uh, just also make sure that your power is correct and you're getting the right voltage so that it's helping your board do all that it's supposed to do and pro processing like it should because it's got the right voltage. Absolutely. And if you want to send us a picture of what your Miss Pac-Man cabinet looks like, what the screen looks like, uh, we can probably help you narrow down where the problem may be as well. So if you want to send in a picture to us, feel free to do that. Otherwise, please check out the resources that we mentioned and should get you on the right track. Tim, anything else for no. Colby? Okay, well, we'll leave know, it there. Colby, Colby hopefully that answers your questions. Good luck getting your Miss Pac-Man game working 100% once again. Okay, Tim, let's uh, continue on here. Um, oh, Ed says, uh, nice retro t-shirts. So there you go. Wow. No, right. thank you. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Um, let's see. Um, Arcade Hollywood Channel should be uploading videos about our pajama soon. So now, oh. Tim, I've seen the our pajama. That's the little, uh, there's a jam adapter that you can plug a, a Raspberry Pi into. Okay. That'll actually just plug it in. So wow. you wouldn't even need the JPEG necessarily. Wow. Basically, it would eliminate that piece of it. So if you want our pajama, the little adapter, you can do that. I believe our friend Joe at High, um, high Score... Is it high score saves yes. or I always forget what it is. Um, actually sells those. Okay. So if you want to do something like that, uh, let's see. Um, Michael says, by the way, bought all of your DVDs and love watching them. Thank you, Michael. Oh, well. Thank you for lot. buying our DVDs. We love it. So, uh, and uh, uh, let's see. A uh, delusional's got some videos, I guess, on the RPAG K2. And Tim, of course, the Raspberry Pi has become very popular because it's cheap. Right. <laughs> and it actually runs quite a bit of stuff. Right. And there's pre-built images for all sorts of different stuff. And, and you so, can more customize your own games that you really like exactly of, you, right it makes it easy for you to do it instead of having to do like custom like a pc with cut you know kind of configuring all your software everything like that you just download an image that's ready to go you put your roms on there and you're good to go huh. so i mean it, it makes it a lot easier i think a, a lot of people are going the raspberry pi route the only thing i don't like about the raspberry pi is a lot of times it doesn't have the power to do some of the systems i want like my uh my little main cabinet i got over here will do dreamcast Oh, okay. Okay, and Dreamcast is pretty powerful. And so I, I don't know if there's a Raspberry Pi out there that'll do um, Dreamcast games yet. Right. So at full speed. But mine runs like Marvel vs. Capcom, no problem. And people like them because they're small and they can make barcade 
the exactly. Bar you can make exactly. You can make too. like a little bar top and things like that. Yeah, I mean they're really awesome boards. They do a lot of stuff. So if you guys haven't checked into Raspberry Pis before, you definitely need to do that. Uh, let's see. Um, Super Goya says a warning about Pi Arcade. Make sure you use their SD card image. Otherwise, some things like controls might not work correctly. Learn this the hard way. And yeah, when okay. it comes down to that stuff, make sure you're using the right image for everything. So. Okay, Tim, on, on to our other topics here. Tim, we have a question from Cosette, and I think you're going to find this I one like interesting. This. I do like this question. Okay, you like this question. Okay, uh -huh. he's already looked at the outline, folks. Here <laughs> we go. Hello, I've been watching and troubleshooting my game with your help. Thank you for your videos. They are so helpful. Upon troubleshooting the monitor being blind, I noticed this wire was just sitting on top of the monitor loose. Do you have a video on how to reattach this wire? This is our first arcade game, and my son and I are still learning. Thank you so much. Hope to hear from you soon. Cosette. So, Tim, um, what's that wire? It is a reverse stethoscope. You put that <laughs> up to your ear and listen. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't say that. Don't do that. Do not do that. No, Please, that... do not do that at all. At yeah, all, at all, are, at all. We are joking. Yeah, do, that... not, do not touch that. Do not come in contact yeah. with that, especially with the game powered on, Tim, because what is that? That is the anode that goes and carries your high voltage up to your tube. That is correct. And so you do not want to even turn your game on with that thing disconnected. Exactly. We could have, like, major electrical issues, right? Yeah. You and so this is probably why you're playing blind, right? Yes. It <laughs> definitely does not work very good with that unplugged. Oh, okay. You know this from experience? Yes. Okay, and I know I've told the story about the time that you left the monitor plugged in and I stuck a screwdriver under there and tried to discharge it, right? Yeah, probably we so. We told that story uh -huh. before? Okay, just making sure. But uh, yes, Cosette, what you have there is the anode cup that goes to the flyback on the monitor. This is the high voltage section of the monitor. Yeah. Too. You're and still so you alive, but one day when we're really old and, and if... And if you go before I do, you can probably look at me and go, I've had two more years. <laughs> yes. so. But anyway, so, um, but that is the high voltage section of the monitor. You want to be extremely careful around that. But without that hooked up to the monitor tube, you're not going to get a picture, right, Tim? Correct. Because you're not getting any high voltage to the monitor. And so what you need to do is hook that back up to the tube. And Tim, uh, let's go ahead and talk about how you do that. Well, she asked, do we have a video? And fortunately, we do. Yes, we have a video that talks about uh, removing and installing a monitor and we actually show that a couple times in that video. You do have to use some precautions, make sure that you uh, discharge it, make sure that uh, you're wearing safety uh, protection and everything, but it is possible um, to hook that back up pretty easily. I like how she circled it and put the little arrow. Yeah. I mean, that was very helpful. That was I mean, very you know, helpful. Yeah, exactly. Although so, I think I would have noticed that. It, it, yeah, there you go. Um, the wire that you refer to is loose, like we says, the anode, Tim, the anode cup, if you will, because it's got uh -huh. the little cup uh, part on it, that comes uh, from the flyback on your chest attached to the tube. Without this being attached to the tube, you will not get a picture on your monitor as it supplies power to your tube. Please do not turn on the game again without this being attached. And don't... Put it anywhere close to, to ear, anything any involving you. Exactly. Right. So, uh, especially away. with it on. Keep away. Exactly. Now, Tim, as long as the monitor is off, you're yeah, okay. Yeah, and it's discharged. Um, In that, fact, we should mention that when you go to reattach this thing, make sure that you're kind of using the same steps that we talk about, Tim, on discharging an arcade monitor, that right. you have a grounded screwdriver because... Um, those tubes can still hold voltage, yeah. and you can still get zapped even though the anode hasn't been hooked up to the tube for right. a while. So, I mean, keep keep that in mind. You still need to have a grounded screwdriver when you're doing it. Yeah, this. the worst I've ever seen anybody shocked was Jerry at one time, and it wasn't from the anode. It was from the hole that the anode actually goes in. He'd come across it kind of with a ring or something on his finger, right. and it actually came out of the tube onto him like that. Even though he had probably already discharged it, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, you he, see... I mean, it happens. I mean, right. those tubes can hold a charge for a long time, so that's something to keep in mind. Yes, we do have a video on how to attach the anode cup back to the tube. Uh, check out removing and installing a monitor chassis, Tim, because we actually t show how to remove the monitor chassis and then install it mm -hmm. back. And part of installing the monitor chassis has to do with putting the anode back on. Right. And so if you check out that video, it should help you out. Tim, anything else for Cosette before we move on? No, just uh, do a little research. That anode goes to your flyback. Uh, so do your own research there and look at look at how that works and everything. Normally that should have had a high voltage tag or something on there. Yes. You might want to put something like on there for a future if it doesn't have it on there. Absolutely. So because that hopefully answers your question, please be careful around the anode and make sure that you're not it doesn't come in contact with any body part while the game is on. And make sure you also discharge your tube even though, like we said, we haven't hooked up the anode for a while. Just make sure that you do a discharge because those tubes can hold voltage for a while. But once you hook that back up, Tim, that'll at least get you to a point where you may know what's going on. And Tim, it could be that her flyback's bad, which is 
why they disconnected it or whatever probably the case may so. be. Or it just fell off. Exactly, or it just fell off or whatever the case may in be. In a but move be, or something. Yeah, please be careful, but hook it back up and then let us know what you get and we'll help you out further. Okay, Tim, we got a couple of questions here in the live chat, so okay. let's go to those. Dan says, do you have any quick recommendations on restoring MDF on arcade cabinets, like filling holes and bits that have chipped off? Yes, normally we like to use Bondo, like you use on a car. Right. You, you now, mix it. this is with the MDF, though, kind of pre-laminated stuff, I assume, is what he's talking about. Yeah, and that actually may come into play. Um, it, it actually still works right. in MDF. Okay, so actually you can still, work, you still use Bondo pretty well. You still use Bondo pretty well. The problem is is that you really need to sand it, and if it's uh, that laminate look, you'll scratch it up pretty bad, and Correct. it's hard to paint. Right. So um, the, we're going to recommend some stuff on another question, so stay tuned because I'm going to actually try something new next week that I've heard is really good on that. People at Chuck E. Cheese have been using it on kitty rides, which are made of fiberglass kind of. Right. Uh, so uh, that's a couple of options that you can fill it in. Just even, I, I know people that want to use like a wood putty or something, I would stay away from that. But there is, uh, I'll go ahead and mention it, J.B. Weld makes a putty type stuff okay. that you can put in there. And so you could probably get that without a lot of excess. Sure. Because it's kind of like putty. You're right. It's like silly putty or something. You're putting it in there. And then once that hardens, you can sand that a little bit or dremel it down or something before you paint. But Or you're just going to have to get it as smooth as you can, scrape it off, and then just paint that area with, some, with a marker or with some black touch up without having to sand a lot. Right. Normally on a wood cabinet, we just gunk it up and sand off and you just, you know, it works and fills in real good. We've actually got videos that, uh, where we do that. But I know what he's talking about with that slick black. You just gotta be careful that you're not, uh, depending on how big a hole you got. Now, if you got a really big hole, you can fill it with other stuff first. Right. And then come in with a light layer of Bondo. But Bondo still works really good. A lot of times, Tim, if, if it's a piece that's chipped off, I will try to save those pieces and glue them back on. Yes. I've actually done that before. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's something you can do as well if you have those pieces and Super glue works really good in that right. situation, just gluing it right back in there. Exactly. So, there you go. Uh, Ed says, will you still need to do the same discharging method for the cup after it was not hooked up? Yes. Yes, of course, because you don't know... It stores the power at the tube and there. So there's right. two places I would touch. Right. There you go. Uh, Silly Sausage 72 actually says, I think Bondo might work, which is what you mentioned, Tim. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, will MDF soak up Bondo, making it swell? Um, no, not really. Okay. I don't think so. I mean, it, we're, we're again, we don't know how big a hole we're talking about here. Correct. At some point, uh, I have literally had to uh, heat up really high let the uh, laminate pull up, right. do a repair, and then re-glue the laminate. Gotcha. That may help too, because you can get to the wood that's under there and repair that a bigger place. There you go. So there you go. Uh, so there's some good tips there, Dan. So hopefully that ha helps you out with your MDF issues. Uh, Tim, unfortunately, no real... I mean, you can do that stuff, but I don't know if you ever will get that slick finish that you had kind of when it was done the first time. Yeah, like it's, really it's really hard, to, hard get, to get it back to that. To back to that. So there you go. Okay, well, let's go ahead and move on in our pre-prepared questions. And the next one is from Christopher. And Christopher writes, Hey, guys, hoping you could help with a monitor issue. I have a Wells Garner 25K7194 in a Captain America four-player cabinet. Originally, the monitor was working fine, except for the picture was a little red and the white showed up a little pink. I messed with the pots and couldn't get it much better, so I hooked up a TBG, test pattern generator, Tim, for okay. those who don't know. All the rest of the test patterns show up properly, and I adjusted the colors as well. When I reconnected the game board, it started giving me a red screen with some lines. Also, the green and blue colors don't seem to show up anymore, no matter what position the pots are in. What happened? Where should I look? I'm new to modern repair, but the chassis has been recapped. Thank thanks in advance. You guys are awesome. Okay, Tim, so we have a Captain America here, and it sounds like it was working pretty good, except it was kind of giving him some off colors, right? right. He's getting a little pinkish here, pinkish colors, let's see. Um, white show up a little pink, you know, a little red tint on the screen, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Okay, so he hooks up the test pattern generator, he gets it dialed in, okay? So he, un so, I mean, he probably unhooks the monitor input, uh -huh. okay, hooks up the test pattern generator, okay, and then hooks back up the monitor input. Okay, right. from the board. That's why I'm, I'm guessing that's the process Christopher went through here. Okay, after doing that, Tim, now all he has is a red screen. Mm. Okay, like literally with white lines, like what you saw in the picture. And Tim, I can throw this back okay. up here so you guys can see. That's what he's got. Okay. Okay, so what happened? 
Where should he look? Well, you know, if the game is playing, right? Uh, you know, we, it doesn't really talk about. Did he hear the game when this is happening? Remember, not all monitor issues are monitor relay or with the monitor. Sure. So, not all picture issues are with the monitor. Right. One thing that he could do is to unhook his harness and see if his screen goes white. Sure. If it does, or or you know, then you could know. Well, maybe it's not. If only it's red when it's plugged in. Right. Then. Uh, he may have a board issue. Right. It sounds like he could have a definite problem with this game board. Right. And the I mean, video output of the board is causing the issue. Right. I mean, since the, he hooked up the test pattern generator and he got it all dialed in, it sounds like working properly. Right. That would lead me to think that it'd have to be the board that's the issue at this point. Exactly. Correct? I mean, it, because if I'm understanding his test pattern generator works, like he hooked it up to his monitor correct. and it displayed perfectly good on there. Exactly. The colors. Right. Now there is a the opposite would be that he hooked up another monitor type deal to his board, right? But he doesn't say that. He says he hooked it up a way I would and understand. And now there's, it. I mean, the test pattern generators I've seen, Tim, you hook directly to the monitor. There's right. no harness involved. Exactly. Now it, I have seen some though. There are some that you plug up to like the JAMA harness. And you, it generates test patterns through there as well. So that pretty much proved that it probably is a board issue right. because it, his monitor looks fine. With the test pattern generator. With a, Yeah, with the test pattern generator. Or in another thing he could do, since it is JAMA, is to hook up a JAMA board. Remember, guys, we talk about the idea of always having a JAMA board around. And we highly recommend that you can get one really cheap off of eBay golden or tea. something. Like a Golden Tee board. Well, you say Street Fighter, but those Can't came. Say Street Fighter they anymore. came. <laughs> they went up in price. Well, I've seen Golden Tee like ninety seven. Right. For pretty cheap on eBay, thirty bucks. Or um, a uh, what am I trying to say? A Cherry Master. Cherry Master. You know, one of those uh, boards with touchscreen boards like that. A lot of those are JAMA and can be just you're just using to see if it's a picture. So if you plugged in, let's say the Cherry Master board, Cherry Master board looks fine. Bam, you know it's a board issue. Exactly. That's a great thing to have around an extra JAMA board of some sort to put in your because a lot of games are JAMA and it's a good way to test. Absolutely. So Tim, let's go ahead and look at some of the stuff. At this point, it doesn't look like a monitor issue, like we mentioned. This looks more like a board issue of some sort. Right. Uh, like you, you mentioned, Tim. Uh, you know, make sure that you plug the mon the board into the JAMA connector properly. Now, Tim, if, he, if his test pattern generator was JAMA, and he unplugged that, and he plugged in his board, and then swapped them, he may have mismatched the harness. So make right. sure that you have the harness Yeah, it could be backwards. Proper. Exactly. Make sure you have the harness hooked up properly. Um, make sure you check the power supply. Make sure that your board's getting all the voltages is good. Um, now, Tim mentioned turning on the game without the board hooked up. Right. Okay, if you get a white screen when you turn that brightness up, your monitor's probably okay. Mm. Okay, but then you hook the board up, you're getting red. That really sounds like more of a board issue, like we mentioned. And Tim, it could have been just with all of the pulling and pushing of, of connectors and boards and everything like that, that something happened in that connection to his board, and now he's not getting picture or game. All right. So, I mean, we don't know. It's really hard to tell. Um, but it really, at this point, Tim, I mean, if I was diagnosing that, I would say board. Yes, probably so. I mean, that's what I would say. So, uh -huh. but again, you can check voltages on, make sure your board's getting the right voltage. Check your connections. Check all that stuff, Tim. That's kind of, that kind of stuff will help. Uh, but Tim, hooking up an air board may be the best bet for him because that will allow him to know for sure what's going on. So. Somebody in that chat room says a sixty and one is great to have around. There you go. Sixty and ones are forty, fifty bucks. There yeah. you go. You can always have a sixty and one. That's a great idea. And you know, Tim, you don't have to worry about uh, getting like a, like a beat up board because most of the time sixty and ones will just work. Right. right. So there you go. That's a great idea. Super Goya will will credit for that. Uh, yeah, older Pandora boxes, sixty and one boards. Tim, like Pandora's box threes on uh, some of these Chinese websites are going for like thirty bucks. Wow. You know, so, I mean, you can get you something like that, fully JAMA compatible, and it'll work great. So, I mean, that may be the best bet for you at this point, Christopher, because if you're continuing to have this problem, Tim, I mean, just looking at it, definitely looks like a game board. Okay. So, that's for me, too. Anything else for Christopher before we move on? No, let's uh, get back in touch with us, Christopher, and let us know what, what you find on that, but I'm pretty sure you got a game board issue. Sounds good. So, Christopher, hopefully answer your question and get back with us if you have any more details. We'll try to help you out further. Uh, you know, like I said, check your board stuff because that's really connections and everything because that's really where we're thinking this issue lies. So, okay, anything else here? I'm looking at the live chat. Looks like we're okay. So we're going to continue on here, Tim. And this one is from Jeff. Let's go ahead and move to Jeff. 
I have had a Galaga for about a year. When I first got it, it smelled of cat pee and the cabinet needed a little work. I think I've had that cabinet before a couple of times. <laughs> a couple of times. The cat pee cabinet. Yeah, the start Galaga. It? And it's a Galaga, too. Yeah. Whenever we I've have had one definitely in storage one like that. with yeah. kind of... I think if you sneezed really hard, it would have fell in. You know, good thing we sold that one, huh? Yeah. There you go. We probably well, should have just burned it. Anyway. I think Jeff ended up with it. Sorry, oh, Jeff. There you go. I, I let it air out for a while outside. Besides being dirty, it played fine except for some white vertical lines that would sometimes roll down or flicker on the screen. I recently refinished the cabinet, took everything apart, cleaned, paint, and laminated, and put new artwork on it. It looks great. I was hoping the flickering would go away with the reassembly, but it did not. I recapped the main board, same issue. Recapped the monitor, same issue. I have not checked voltages, clean connectors, or tried to reseat any chips. Any suggestions where to start? Have you seen this issue before? Now, Tim, both these pictures, of course, are of the Galaga cabinet. Now, Tim, I want you to take very, you know, a very detailed inventory of this photo. You'll notice that those white lines actually kind of happen behind the text. Yes. You see that? Uh-huh. So, I mean, that, that to me, seems to lend it more towards a board issue. Yes. Because if it was a monitor issue, those white lines would interfere more with that text. Exactly. And so that's something to really look for here. So, Tim, with that in mind, probably a board uh -huh. issue of some sort, what advice can you give Jeff as far as fixing these white vertical lines on his Galaga board? Well, one thing good we mentioned already is, like, Pac-Man and Galaga were very popular games. So, therefore, there were a lot of boards that had to be repaired. Sure. There's a lot of information out there. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, we have on our resources page, one of our guys is really good, and he sells a renew kit. Yes. And that would be Raymond. So, uh, we're... we're uh, based on our research, it looks like he may have a bad video RAM, which is very common. And uh, IC chip at location 5B will fix that. But I highly recommend, because he probably wants to keep his Galaga. Not very many people are buying them to, to resale. That's right. So if he wants to keep it, to go ahead and get the Renew Kit from Raymond and try to put that in there. I bet that will take care of all so those So what issues. does the Renew Kit do? Well, basically the sockets on Galaga cabinets or Galaga boards just die, Tim, yeah. like all the time or they come unsoldered or they have all sorts of problems. So even, Tim, if you replace a socketed chip, you may still have problems because the socket may be bad. Right. And so basically what the Renew Kit contains is brand new sockets for all the socketed chips okay. and actually gives you some sockets for some that aren't socketed already. Okay. Okay, but by doing that alone, sometimes you can fix a lot of these problems. And so like the video RAM that he's got, the sockets may be bad on some of those, right. maybe why he's experiencing this issue. So you kind of have to be on an intermediate level soldering. Right. So if Maybe even advanced because yeah, this gets pretty tough. If you're a novice, you might not want to try that, but you can send it to Raymond. I bet he would do it. He, and he does. He used do to. I don't know you. if he still does, but he used to actually do the install on these. So, I mean, if you're interested in that. But let's go ahead and put this up here, Tim, since we're talking so much about it. All the things you mentioned in your message, the checking voltages, the cleaning the connectors, reseeing chips. Yeah, that's what we normally would have started with. Exactly. And he said, where's the place to start? That's yeah. the place to start. You yeah, got there. it right off. Uh, with that said, this des definitely looks more like a board issue. It does. Like we mentioned. I mean, not probably a monitor issue. Uh, so video RAM chips, of course, are, are one of the things you need to look at. Tim mentioned the IC locate, uh, located at 5B, which is yes. a, a, a 74 LS298, Tim, if you're okay. looking to replace that. Um, it's been known to to malfunction and cause these streaks. little streaks. I've seen these streaks before, and we've had an issue with that chip before. So I mean, it's it different the than time. what we would normally call jail bars. Yes, way different. A little different. And yeah. If you guys notice, look at the picture. It looks real streaky. <laughs> right, exactly. And like we said, the fact that the text is still intact, Over, yeah. especially the midway manufacturing down at the bottom. You see that? Yes. How that is actually kind of cut out. Uh -huh. that's really what lends it more to a board issue, you know, versus a monitor issue of some sort. Exactly. And so, you know, when you look at the little details, Tim, you can kind of start to see where the issues are. If it was a monitor issue, those areas be would be blank. Exactly. Yeah. It'd be consistent all the way down. You wouldn't have cutouts for text or anything like that. You would see, like, you'd see that streaking happen on every element of the monitor. And so that's what it really comes down to. Uh, so, like you mentioned, Tim, highly recommend the Galaga Renew Kit from our friend Raymond at ArcadeComponents.com. And we have a link there, which is also down in the video description. And Tim, if... This is really an intermediate to advanced kit. You really yes. need to know how to solder well if you're going to install it. Okay, so uh, don't tackle this for your first soldering job. Okay, if this is the first mm. time you've ever picked up a soldering iron, you don't know which end to hold, please don't get the Renew kit. Right. Um, but there are, uh, on Amazon Tim, there are these great kits you can get, the Learn to Solder kits. Okay, if, that's, if this is your first time soldering, start there. 
work your way up to the Gallagher Renew Kit. Exactly. Okay, because it's going to take you a while to feel comfortable because these are very tiny solder joints, Tim, and they're very delicate. Yeah, and they're really old. Exactly, and, and they're really old. And got a lot old. of corrosion and stuff. I right, mean, but I mean, I can't... Flux. We, we can't recommend the Renew Kit enough if you're going to keep your Gallagher. Okay, because right. this will help bulletproof it, and that's what you want, right? Right. Anything else for Jeff, Tim, before we move on? No, thank you, Jeff, for a great question. Uh, something we haven't really talked about right. much with that picture, really... And the way you described that, Jonathan, was uh, was really accurate on that one. How right. to tell the difference between the board issue there and, and the a monitor, monitor issue. issue. Exactly. And so that's what we're trying to do, guys. We're trying to help you as best as possible. But, Tim, that was only possible because Jeff sent us a picture. Yes. You know, and earlier we had, yeah, we had, um, was it Colby? Colby didn't send in a picture with his Miss Pac-Man. And right. so, yeah, go ahead and send us a picture whenever you're trying to describe your problem because a picture, Tim, is re- really worth a thousand words. It sure right? is. Loud us to say... Location 5B. Exactly. You know, that, was, that helps him troubleshoot. That may be all he has to do, and he may be back up and going. Never know. So there you go. Jeff, hopefully answer your question, though. Good luck getting that Galaga back up and running 100%. Hopefully you can get those lines out of that picture. Okay, I'm going to check over here. Uh, nothing new in the live chat. What's up, live chat? Mm-hmm. So we're just going to say hi. How about that? All right. Hey, you live know, chat. The thing about being live, Tim, I'm, uh, can I take a detour? The thing about yeah. being live is you never know what can happen here. That's right. Literally. <laughs> you never know who's going to show up in the live chat. You never know what we're going to do. I mean, That's... we know what we're going to do, but you never, <laughs> you, they I don't never know. know. I, I never know <laughs> what I'm going to do. <laughs> there you go. So, but uh, that's one of the great things about being live with you guys is, of course, anything can happen, Tim. Yeah. You never and, know when you're going to get a cramp. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> that's right. You never know when you're going to get a cramp, like what yeah. happened in one episode. Walk it out. So, um, it's always fun to uh, be live with you guys every, what, the first Thursday of every month, just like tonight. So, thank you guys for joining us again. Okay, Tim, let's move on to Rob. Rom Pin One and okay. Tim, he's kind of calling you out here. Okay. Okay. So I can, I'm, I'm, I can handle it. You I'm can a, handle I'm it. Not above reproach. Okay. Here we go. So Rom Pin One, Tim. This is from, uh, this is from YouTube. He says, "I watched your video on adjusting a coin mech, and I don't believe it is accurate. The initial screw isn't the only adjustment on the coin mech. You can't use this technique to modify a coin mech that's designed for a specific type of coin, i.e., token, and make it accept a different type." Correct. Okay, so Tim, that's that's pretty hard there. He's basically yeah. saying that he doesn't believe you're accurate. I mean, that's the first thing that comes out of his his mouth. He says that initial screw is only the uh, is isn't the only adjustment on the coin. Right. Okay, and then he says you can't use it to modify it. Okay, that's designed for a certain type of coin and make it accept a different type. Right. It's almost fighting words in Texas. Yeah, that's right. But, <laughs> Dem's fighting words, yeah, Dem's right? Yeah, fighting so, words. Yeah, and I didn't say but it right. That was enough. I think he misunderstood the purpose of the video was right. to show how to adjust that particular kind of mech. Right. You can't, we mentioned that you cannot just put any kind of, like to, in other words, if you want to use a really small token or a bigger token, you've got to have that kind of mech. Right. But you can use those steps to adjust that mech once you get whatever your token is. Right. So coin mechs are typically designed for a currency. Right. Okay. You there, Are there mechs, Tim, and this is a good question for you, are there mechs that will take multiple currencies? There are, and I've and we've I know we, some we, of we, them we've before. We've shown the AnyCoin, any but coin, the AnyCoin's a little bit different. It's not a traditional coin mech. There are some that take a wider range, and uh, you know the... Um, a lot of them have electronics hooked up to them, and you put the size token that you want on the back side. Remember those yes, mechs? Yes, yes, yes. They're normally a roll-down mech, and so you say, match this one. But it won't take four or five different sizes. Correct. It'll take that size that you put in there. Correct. So I think he misunderstood our point of the video. The point of the video was... Not to be able how, to change the currency, right. right? Yeah, we're not trying to change the currency. How to adjust it to take a, a real common was we were working with .984, if I remember, right. uh, token max, and how to adjust them because those are the most one of the most common ones to do. In order to change that to a 5 millimeter or some kind of coin that's about the size of a nickel or a nickel mech, you're going to have to, it's, you can't just make that mech and just and screw it down. You've you got to, to change a different, the different mech. mech. Correct. So a good example would be a quarter mech versus a nickel mech. Correct. Uh, you've got to have a nickel mech. You can, and then you can adjust it to where it'll easily take a nickel, maybe a little bit there. And there are a couple other adjustment places. Uh, one thing that I used to hate when we had coin mechs was there's a magnet back there, and you get a Canadian coin. It always had metal always in caught, it, right. and we get caught right there. But um, fortunately, we're not too close not to Canada. Not the Imanex. So. 
Right. The Iman X <laughs> was our favorite mech, and it adjusts even a little bit different. Yes, it does. And can take a lot of different sizes. But uh, what's important is the cradle part that rocks. Right. That's why it's called a cradle. And it has a weight on it, and that weight will determine on whether where it lets them drops the coin out over here to down to the switch or rejects it back here exactly so you can't or like in the day you know when we used to drill a hole in a quarter and put it on a string <laughs> and you can kind of get a lot of credits like that some but guys, the cradle prevents that, right? that cra it will cut the string correct uh, there are so the modern coin makes a lot different from the one we had in the 80s that we used to get you know, 400 credits on Galaga was a strike. <laughs> I go. mean, I saw guys do that. <laughs> okay. I say. Now, you never did that. I never did Okay, of course sure. not. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and throw this up here, Tim. Please note that the idea behind this post and video is not to change the currency that the CoinMed ex accepts. Right. We're not trying to change the currency that the CoinMed accepts accepts we are trying to adjust the coin mech to allow the currency that it does accept that's designed to accept to fall through smoothly without any issues because tim over time coin mechs become i guess come out of alignment is that a good way to say yeah, it and they just get dirty and a little gunk right on them and they uh it doesn't take much to for them to jam i'd rather it be a little on the um easy side then try it so hard that it wouldn't take one out of ten. I wanted to take, even if it took a coin that was slightly a little bigger or slightly a little smaller, I would take that chance over a quarter or something that's getting jammed all the time. Right. So, I mean, but that, like you said, the mech that we show in the video, that one is designed for tokens. And so we're showing how to adjust it to take tokens properly. Right. That's but what I, we're doing. But I would say this. If he wants to shoot a video, <laughs> or if he wants to debate... Oh, you got to bring come, him on. He huh? can come on the show. But no, if he wants to shoot a video, we'd be glad to feature it and uh, use his coin mech uh, expertise. Oh, okay. So you're, you're going to invite him on, huh? Sure. Okay, there you go. Well, now, I mean, I, I, like I said, the pur purpose of that video was not what he was talking about. But if you would like to t do a more in depth video on coin mechs, we would be very glad to feature it. There you go. Uh, in order to accept different currency in your game, you will need to purchase a coin mech that's designed to take that currency, right, Tim? Yes. Okay, there are coin mechs that will do multiple coins. Okay, uh, actually, Louis posted the one that takes six separate coins. Um, and there's ones that we are familiar probably the most, Tim, with the US quarter slash .984 token mechs. Yeah, the D, the D cradle one is, stands for double, and it will do quarters or and it tokens. Can be, yeah, it can be modified to take both or one or the other. Um, but most coin mechs that you see in games, Tim, are single currency. Yes. I mean, unless, unless somebody has purposefully put a mech in there that takes more... The vast majority of games, Tim, that we've gotten at auctions or that we've picked up from individuals or that we bought from operators almost always take a single currency. Now, we have seen some redneck annuity. Right. Redneck ingenuity. Redneck ingenuity. Yeah, some redneck engineering. Remember, we saw one that would take pennies. It was made of cardboard. Yes, I saw the cardboard one. And, Tim, of course, um, <laughs> the new version of that is the AnyCoin mech that we yes. talked about on previous live show episodes that Louie actually linked to as well. And so you can get, yeah, you can rig up something that will take multiples. But, Tim, the whole point of that video was to show how to basically get a single currency coin mech to take that currency smoothly. Yeah, you want it to t actually a little too smoothly, almost. You know, where right. it's just dropping in there really quick. Exactly. And so, and so, yes, we didn't show you how to change it from one currency to another, Tim. A lot of coin mechs can't be changed. Correct. Okay, unless it is meant to be modified, you can't, I mean, you have to do a lot to modify it, right? Right. It's not designed to be modified. It's not worth it to change out the cradle and some of the other parts just to make it take a different current. Exactly. Coin. So, Tim, anything else for ROM Pen 1 here uh, before no. we leave? Any other fighting words or no. anything you want to get in here? We're so. calling a truce. Okay, you're calling uh, a truce? I don't know. You, you know, you, you don't read the uh, attitude in a text. But it did sound a little rough. I'm it just did, saying. I did just a but little But he can bit. hear my voice and say, hey, it's all good. Uh, the purpose of that video was to show how to adjust any mech Right. for the particular type coin that, that you're using. Yeah, so there you go. So uh, hopefully answers your question, Ron Penn, or not really question statement, whatever you want to say. And, uh, you know, good luck. There are mechs out there that take multiple currencies. They're very easy to adjust typically, Tim. So if you're going to go that route, your best option is to buy one that does that, right? Right. So there you go. Okay, here we go. Um, Tim, let's move on here. I'm looking at the... Um, oh, somebody said throwing shade at Mr. Arcade Repair Tips. <laughs> 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 Somebody's throwing shade at you, man. Right. 
<laughs> so there you go. It's okay, he says. Uh, anyway, so let's move on here to the next question we have, and this is from Danny3Flip. Any way to repair a crack in a plastic bezel? Yeah. And, and Tim, I'm assuming this is going to be a bezel that's probably something custom that you can't get on like every game because i mean mm-hmm. obviously there are places that sell like the generic plastic bezels right okay? let's say it's a tron shroud or something right exactly that's tron got a crack Shroud's in a great it great example there you and go. you want to repair that well yes it's it's a little time consuming yes but um you start down by sanding down the area and you can get uh just like we mentioned earlier with bondo they also make a fiberglass bondo right and it comes with uh, a st- that strip of stuff and some filler and all that. So you're going to need to put all that a resin and a hardener and all that in there. But the new product that I wanted to mention tonight, and I said we would come back to this, sure. is called Steel. In fact, guys, excuse me. Gonna I'm going to look it up. I'm going to do some research on the fly and <laughs> well, give you the yeah, exact. I'll go ahead and give them what I show found. show the screen. I'll give them what I found, and okay. you can give them what you found here in a second. So, uh, yes, it is possible to repair a plastic bezel. It just takes a lot of time and hard work. Here's a breakdown of the process, Tim. Stand, stand down the broken areas. Apply a fiberglass mat and brush with a resin harder to fill the area or cover the crack. So you put basically a fiberglass mat over it. You brush it with a resin and a hardener to, to kind of secure that mat in place. Uh, you take some Bondo plastic weld to cover it and grind off any excess. And then finish it off by repainting it. Use primer first if needed. And Tim, this, um, all of this came from Troxen who did this uh, iRobot plastic control panel on KLOV, and I've got a link there, which is also down below in the description. And this is amazing. I mean, basically, you can see how cracked it is in the before. And Tim, this is not necessarily his. This is just kind of an example of one that's all cracked up. And then you can see the after where, I mean, it almost looks like you can't even tell the difference between that and a new one. Right. And so um, you can go this route. This is one way to go. But Tim's saying there's a different way to go. And Tim, why don't you tell us that while we're here? Well, uh, we're just got uh, joined by one of our RK techs named Trevor, so I want to shout out to Trevor. Oh, there you go. Hope you got a good score today on uh, your Game Ride Show review. <laughs> but we're going to talk about this. Um, we didn't talk about that. We'll it is called right. the Steel Stick. I don't know if you guys can. I don't think they can see they that. Can't I can see, see that. if I can bring it up. But um, uh, It's so, called a Steel Stick. I'll give you the we'll Granger. We'll put a link in the, in the yeah, description. And I'll give you a Granger part number. Okay. But it's made by J.B. Weld. Everybody's familiar with J.B. Weld. Look for the Steel. S-T-E-E-L. Steel Stick, all one word. Okay. S-T-E-E-L. S-T-I-K. Okay. Okay. What that is, everybody likes J.B. Weld. It's great stuff. Sure. Takes a while to dry. But it really is good for especially metal, and you can actually kind of... I put some on an oven 10 years ago. It's still there. There you go. And, but it had to sit overnight. What you do is more like a putty, and you fill in those holes with it or behind it. Then you can sand and paint over that. I'm going to use that technique. In fact, we maybe we'll, I'll take, take some, some pictures, pictures, and we may just make it next, uh, next month's month te- tech tip or something. So I'm going to try that. I just ordered it today. So it's called uh, Steel Stick by J.B. Weld, and I've heard good things about that, and you can kind of use that to repair some of this stuff too, but there is no, if you want to bring up that picture again, John, there is no arguing with uh, his work either, and uh, if you'll look at that before and after pick, I think you guys will see what we're talking about, how close it looks. Now remember that you do have to paint it. Louie actually posted a link to the J.B. Wells steel stick in the live chat. So if okay. you guys are interested in that, you guys can get it. Um, it he actually posted a link from J.B. Wells' site. Okay. So good. And you actually, it looks like that's the same the same. It probably is. there as well. So yes, that is the same stuff that Tim's talking about there. Thank you, Louie, for posting it to everybody in the live chat. So it is Granger. If, you know, I order a lot of stuff from Granger. Part number 2U, V as in Victor, 84. There you go. 2UV84. Lou, if you want to uh, look that up on Granger, 2UV84. There we go. So it gets Cheap you the twos. JB Weld steel stick. Yeah, I think it's like five bucks. There you go. So now how, how big of an area will that cover? I, I don't know that yet because I haven't used it, but I'm pretty sure it would cover most uh, anything I would say big as your hand or smaller. It's probably not going to do bigger than that in one thing. Uh, it looks like a tube, uh, kind of a. It's called a stick. So, right. and I, I'm like I said, I'm really interested in trying that. I've heard really good things about it. 
So maybe those guys that really like to repair stuff, I heard it was really good on plastics and fiberglass and stuff, especially those little holes that are just kind of, you know, irritating or, you know, definitely first thing somebody sees in your game, you got this beautiful game that's at that one little place. Exactly. So it sounds good. Well, guys, you can uh, try kind of the techniques we've talked about here, or you can try the steel stick that Tim's talking about. And Tim, you'll post or you'll give us some results next month and let us know how it's going. Yes, right? sounds I will. good. So we'll find out then. So thank you for that. And uh, Louis also posted the Granger um, link, Tim, yes. for okay. the for the JB Well steel stick. If you guys want to go that route, so. Well, Tim, I think that does it for the questions. Nothing else in the live chat. Of course, you guys can continue to ask questions in the live chat, so go ahead and do that if you want to. We'll continue to answer those. But, Tim, we're to your tech tip. Okay. Okay, so um, I'll let you get prepared here while we talk about this, or I'll grab your stuff. <laughs> here we go. Uh, so uh, talk to us a little bit about what your tech tip is for this month. Well, we're going to talk about testing a switch. Now, this is a Cherry switch. Um it's cherry is the brand right it's not and so it may not actually be made by cherry kind of like we call everything a kleenex even though it may be puff brand right so cherry really, is micro a switch brand. Is right. it's a call micro it. switch um i'll call it a cherry switches because that's what they they make millions and billions of them sure um and we're going to show you a, a closer up picture but all your buttons you know have this and sometimes um we have it. We had a game the other day that was erroring a lot because the switch. One thing you learn to be as a good tech is trust your meter. Remember above everything because yes. it your eyes and ears can fool you, but they are good. And sometimes you can hear you can hold a click. Up. There you go. There's you hear that click. click. So I know that this switch is probably good. When they get bad, they won't click or they'll stay stuck. Or the red part right there, the, the, actuator. the actuator, will actually just get worn. Sometimes at an angle like this so that it's not hitting. Sometimes you can just flip it around and it'll hit better. But by that time, they're just a, a dollar or something. Yes. It's a good time to replace them. But we're going to talk about how to check this with a multimeter. So I'm going to show the outline bring here. the outline. Yeah. So, um, so today, uh, Tim's tech tip, testing micro switches with a multimeter. And Tim, this uh, image, of course, comes from the Real Bob Roberts website, real Bob, therealbobroberts.net. And um, he's got his one, two, three, his common, right. his normally closed, and his normally open. And, of course, Tim, um, the vast majority of games that we deal with will have wires hooked up. The ground wire will hook it up to the common, and the um, activation wire will be hooked up to the normally open. Right. Okay. Because the switch is normally open until you do something like push a button or move a joystick and hit it or whatever it is. You don't want it to the game to do anything until that moment so it's normally open until you close the switch and tell the game kick right or punch right or whatever it is now in the drawing right there from one to two they're actually if you open these up and of course i have and yes. taken them apart and played sure. with them there is some springs in there what i call a diving board it actually looks like that and when you push that button it moves the diving board down to the normally open position and makes the continuity or the check so that's how we check it we use the multimeter we can go back to it right and i'm gonna and actually we set it on our continuity beep now okay. you don't have to have uh the continuity beep but boy it sure helps right exactly if you're going to spend money on a, a, a meter get one that beeps it's so much easier and all you do is when you touch your leads together it makes a beep we used to have one that just sounded like it was on its last leg, but it worked really good. <laughs> sure. It didn't really beep. It just kind of went, <laughs> but anyway, it makes a noise. Okay. Can you put it back together for real, real? There you go. Yeah. So like this one, you know, it tends, usually what it'll do, if it's beeping, it'll tend towards zero. Yeah. So like, right. Yeah, exactly. So right now we're getting close to zero. So. so we use the continuity beep a lot because that's how we test fuses and stuff like that. We can put it on the end of each end of a fuse and it will tell us if it's a continuous line through there, if it beeps and we know the fuse is probably good. Also, we use it in wiring to go from the JAMA harness 
to our button to see and see if we have continuous wiring or if there's a break in our wiring. But that's another subject because today we're going to talk about the switch. So while you're, while you're putting the pros up, I'm going to read what you do. So you put your multimeter in continuity mode. We have the icon there, Tim. It's pretty much the same. Um, you may not have the little um, the little second icon there. Only if your meter has a beep right. test will it have that. Um, you place the black probe on the common. You place the red probe on the normally open. And you press it and see if it beeps. So here we go, right. Tim. So Tim has got it all rigged up. Now, it, sometimes it takes four hands for this, right? Yeah, I'm pretty skilled. So I'm, I've got my yeah. black lead on there. And that every time I hit that, it's going to beep. Now, what should it do, Jonathan, if I touch the top one or the normally closed? It should beep immediately. And then when you press it, it should turn It does off. the opposite. Okay. Right. The only game I can remember at Chuck E. Cheese that we had that used that was a foot pedal. And when it stayed on the switch like this, and when you push the pedal, it come off the switch. Right. So it told it, go faster when you do this. We don't have that game anymore. It was called Monster Truck. But anyway, so most of the time, you've got two wires, three places. Well, which ones do you use? Well, you're always going to use the, bot the, the common, and that's the one that is like in Sesame Street, the one that doesn't look like the others. Right, exactly. You know, he the one kinda, out to the side. He kind of plays by himself down here at the bottom. Then the one closest to it is your normally open, and that's how you test your switch. And they do go bad, so don't always think uh, that it's uh, a wiring issue or something. First thing I do is test the switch with my meter to make sure that that's what that is. And you see, and that's a thing here, Tim. Like somebody said, you know, I just replace a micro switch if I think it's bad. Well, you can do that, but the whole idea of this is to narrow down. Is it a wiring issue? Is it right. a switch issue? Why, uh, is it a board issue? I mean, is the switch making the right connection to the board? Is the board interpreting that signal properly? I right. Mean, and so, you know, like Tim mentioned, a lot. the first thing you want to check a lot of times is the switch. You know, instead of the wiring or the board. And right. so that's why you want to test that. If it's working, then you move on to wiring. You it doesn't take but board. a second to go ahead and test that. Also, let's say if I was to get a new a game used, let's say it was a Street Fighter or a Mortal Kombat. Right. You know how many times those buttons and switches have oh, been pushed? Yes, absolutely. So it's a great time to go ahead and replace the button, have new switches. But even a new switch I have seen before that just didn't, didn't work right, bad factory, uh, mod or whatever just came through. It wasn't good. So even new switches I have seen that are bad from the box. So uh, always test your switches. You use your multimeter uh, tool to do that. There you go. And Tim, I'm going to put this up here one last time for everybody. So the steps. Put your multimeter in continuity mode. Place the black probe on the common. Press the red. Uh, place the red probe on normally open. Press the actuator and the multimeter should beep or read zero. Yes. So hey, easy enough and you guys can see right here where the common and nope normally open are commons always the one that's off by itself usually on the bottom of the switch yeah uh, normally open is the one closest to it so there you go so tim thank you so much for that tech tip i think that's it sounds handy. like a simple thing sometimes we have to revisit the simple stuff but uh, there's a lot of guys watching that have never done that so good luck to you guys on repairing your games a continuity beep learning how to use that will help you tremendously use it every day almost working on games there you go so thank you for the tech tip tim now we had a question come in while we were doing that youtube punk says i have a small tube tv with a small scratch dead center is there a way to repair that like polish it out uh let's see it's got enough depth to feel it okay, okay. so it's on the tube itself um you know you can try to fill it you know um louis said that you can use novice Yes. Uh, to try to buff it out. Yes. I mean, you can try to buff it out. You can try to fill it. But, I but mean, nothing... the fact that he can fill it is is not good. Right. Um, you might, we could probably Google a uh, glass repair because it's not plexi. Right. You know, and so novice works better on plastics and stuff. Right. Uh, true glass repair. Um, you might check even, sounds as crazy as it is with one of your local glass shops and ask them, ask their opinion. Because, you know, you, you used to, if your windshield had a crack, what'd you do? You just went, oh, I got $200, I go buy new. What do you do now? They drill a little hole and they fix it and they make it and you can't even tell it. So I know there's some products out there that I'm not super familiar with, but you might try your local glass shop, you know, tell them your I was, situation. I was going to say too, um, I've... In the past, I've used stuff that gets scratches out of cell phone screens. Yes. Okay, I don't know if that stuff would work well on a TV. 
but I have used that before and it works decent. It never okay. gets rid of, and it seems like it never gets rid of all the scratches, but it gets rid of a lot of them, like right. buffing it out with that stuff. It's like a, it's kind of like novice, Tim. The one I have is a three part yes. system. You know, like you do the one, you do, the, you do like the cleaner, you do uh-huh. like the buffer, and then you do right. like the, you know, finisher or whatever the case uh-huh. may be. And so, um, I've seen the three part systems, which it, basically the same thing for like, for like, um, cell phone screens that are glass. And so something like that may work well as well. But if it's that deep, I don't know. A high don't know speed how buffer will do the best, more, way more than you can get with your hand. So many, so if it's possible, if anybody has any ideas, or if you find something test and it works, please let us know. It's just something that we normally don't do very often. That's a great question. Though. There you go. So, okay, Tim, uh, let us move on here. And um, I, okay, I guess we're going to the discussion section. All okay, right. So let's move on here now, Tim. Uh, we had a post on the Facebook page, Tim, and it was talking about arcade bars. Right. And I, I really found this interesting, Tim. I put this up on the Facebook page, but the uh, title of the Dare article we say was it. Yeah, there you go. The title of the of the article was Whatever you call a bar with vintage arcade games, don't call it a barcade. Okay? Say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Um, the Virginia Pilot, Tim's a newspaper out of Virginia, uh, ran a story on a group that wants to open a bar with vintage arcade games, and they actually use the term barcade in the article. Okay. Okay. The Brooklyn-based barcade company, capital B, reached out to the newspaper about its use of the term barcade to describe businesses fusing the two concepts together. Barcade made the following style suggestions. You may use the neutral terminology such as game bar, arcade bar to refer to businesses other than our own, be it as a description of other game bars or the overall arcade bar concept, rather than a generic version of our trademarked brand name, Barcade. Oh. Okay. So, I mean, to me, this is like this company getting their panties in a wad a little bit. Yeah. I mean, is that fair to say? Yeah, I... I, I uh, trademark Google, and I don't care. <laughs> so, but, I mean, oh, you know, I should, it, I the problem with the term barcade is that, Tim, it's pretty... It's so common. Exactly. I mean, people just put bar and arcade together, and it happened, you know? Right. And, I mean, we've probably been using the term before this Brooklyn company even existed. We've been using believe. this term for a long time. And so I, I find it hard to believe that people are... You know, like they're going uh, going after people. I don't know if they're really. And going they're not after. right across the street. Right, exactly. It's not like they're even in the same state. Right. They're, but they have a problem with people using the generic version of their trademark name. And but, but on the but on the other hand, if uh, somebody who was called Arcade Repair Tips was going around and giving people crazy ideas on how to um, use a. No for stethoscope, and uh, you know, <laughs> any mech can be adjusted for any coin, <laughs> stuff like that. Right. <laughs> you know, we would be upset if it was our name. Right, but I mean, it's one thing though. Like I said, I mean, this is kind of a merging of two names that have already existed. But we can't take repair tips and exactly go after everybody exactly. I mean, there's people that. that use arcade repair tips in their video description, Tim. Right. I mean, what are we gonna do? I right. mean, it's just, I mean. P- arcade repair tips. That's what people do. We are arcade repair tips, but there's people who put out arcade repair tips. tips right? Sure. Exactly. So, I mean, that's the thing. You know, I, I just find it interesting, though, Tim, that um, this Barcade Corporation is going after people for using the term. So, what did our listeners think about Well, it? here's the deal, Tim. I want to shift gears for a second. Okay. Okay. It got me thinking. Oh. Okay. Whenever I saw this article. It's always dangerous when he gets to thinking. I'm telling you. Okay. okay. So, um,. So here's the deal is that it got me thinking, Tim. Okay. Okay. And, and you know, and I guess maybe just because I kind of, I didn't feel like animosity towards this big B barcade, right. but I was kind of like, that's kind of, what's the word? Like just, a little petty. A little petty. Yeah. A great way to say it. So, you know, it just got me thinking just in general here. And so, Tim, it's time for an arcade debate. Oh. So well, here we it's go. On. Here we go. Let it's on. It. And tonight's debate topic is our retro arcade bars, AKA barcades. Bad for the private arcade collecting community. Okay, so, I mean, there you go. So, uh, Tim, this is the debate topic tonight. And the reason I, I kind of came up with this is because we, you know, we kind of had, you know, the Virginia pilot had the struggle with the B, Big B Barcade. Right. And so I thought, well, what a, what do private collectors really think of barcades? Do I mean, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? So, Tim, are you about ready? I'm okay, ready. Let's see. Can we get in our boxes here? Oh, we're in. Oh, you're going to have to scoot over. All right. Oops, wrong way. Hey, go that way. You gotta get away from me. <laughs> there you go, right there. Are we good? We're good. Okay, we're good. Okay. 
So, welcome to the arcade debate segment for tonight, everybody. And tonight's debate topic is, are arcade bars bad for the arcade collecting community, Tim? Or are retro arcade bars, if you don't want to say barcades, um, bad for the private arcade collecting community? Either way, Tim, you can say it either way. So, Tim, what do you think? Are arcade bars bad for the arcade collecting community? Of course not. Of course not? No, they're great for the community. Uh, I... Uh. Okay, so I'm taking the negative on this. Tim's taking the positive. Okay, let's hear it, Tim. Why are arcade bars good for the arcade collecting community? I can't believe I'm saying that. Well, because they give a vast choice of games that you don't have in your own collection that you can go play. Think about it. How much does an average... Let's just say an average game costs $400 on the average. You can get some cheaper, some more. That's 1,600 quarters... You know how much games you can play for 1,600 quarters at a barcade, and you still would only have one game. This way you get to play a lot of games. So your value really for your money is at the barcade, plus you get to drink beer and talk to your friends. But here's the deal, Tim. You're talking about beer. I mean, the thing about an arcade with me is that arcades should be targeted towards kids and have a family atmosphere. In a barcade, you don't have a family atmosphere. I can't take... My daughter and my son, Tim, to the barcade. No, they play at your house. Well, yeah, but you, you get know, away from them. You're, you're exactly right, but the problem is, is that now with the barcades around, they're driving up the prices of all the games I want to buy, because they have bigger budgets than I do as a private collector. Okay, I can't buy. They're driving up the prices of the games I'm looking to buy. Well, have you seen some of the games in these barcades? They're they're not always great taken care of. I understand that, which, fact, is another, which is another reason why I think private arcade collectors should be against barcades. Well, you can actually buy a game from the barcade when it gets old. Yeah, so, but what kind of condition is it going to be in? But it well, you know how to fix games, so what do you care? <laughs> I do know how to fix games, but do I? Want, I guess as long as they're selling, you don't want to pay a premium price, and I get it. But it allows those people to, what if you want to sell one of your games? That's now, true. all of a sudden... On the selling end, it's better. Selling end, it's better. Right. But you might could also trade with the barcade owner. You might He might have something you want, You might, and he might like a fresh new game. So look at it as, we always say, more arcade games that are working and out there. If there's more arcade games working out there, that should make the price go down. As they become more rare and people are collecting them and not selling them... That makes the price go up. Right, but I think overall, though, Tim, is that these barcades are buying up a lot of the inventory that private collectors would be going after. In a lot of cases, I think this is why it's getting harder and harder to find games. It's because you have a lot more bar arcades opening. People are grabbing up these games, and private collectors are suffering because they can no longer afford, you know, a game that sold for three, four hundred dollars you know, like maybe five or ten years ago, now sells for six hundred, eight hundred dollars because the demand has gone up because of barcades. Exactly, but he doesn't have to spend any money near that. He can spend ten dollars and go pay play twenty games that he doesn't have at his local barcade and see his buddies and his but friends. But it's loud at the barcade and there's people everywhere. And I mean, you know, I mean, look, I don't have a problem with arcades. It's barcades and it's like the atmosphere is different. People are spor- pouring beer on these games. These poor games, Tim. These poor <laughs> games are getting beer poured all over them. I'm oh having a flashback to the SPEC commercial <laughs> we did. I'm sorry for the sidetrack. If you've seen it, you know what we're talking about. I'm just saying. They, so even if the barcade owners sell them, they still smell like beer when I get them as a private collectors. Well, so. it's better than cat pee like you get at the auctions. <laughs> no, <you can't>. So, <laughs> uh, I think that overall that more games out there, you also see a game. You remember, there's a lot of games we played in MAME that we forgot about. And all of a sudden we see it and we're like, oh, I would really like to have one of those. Well, you go to a barcade, you see that game, it can help you start on the hunt. Like I said, if you'll get to know your local barcade owners and let them know, hey, I can help you fix those games, you'll not only get free beer, you'll probably get a game or or a good trade or a good deal when the time comes. Well, I hope people are doing that because, I mean, I... Most of the barcades I've been to, they take tarot. They, they they don't take care of the games. And now, Tim, this is not an argument just for arcade bars. This is an argument for arcades even sometimes. In the agree. fact that they don't take care of games. And games in public places, unlike my house, get played a lot. And if you're not spending the money on techs to take care of them, they're not going to be worth anything when you go to resell them. That's just my point. But that's just it. Games are meant to be played and enjoyed. In my house. And, and, at, your, <laughs> at your house... 
your kid and your kid's birthday party is the only people that are going to get to come over here. And uh, you don't want just everybody in your house. But at the Barcade, a lot of hey, people what about festivals? are reintroduced to... Texas Football to... Festival. You take games there? Well, sure. Arcade Expo, you take your games there? I'm just saying. I mean, so anyway, Tim, is there anything else? Final thoughts. Uh, final thoughts are, I agree, Jonathan, that it does seem to, it could drive the price up, but the prices, I think, are going up regardless. And I think before Barcades came along, prices, they're just getting rare. The supply and demand... More people are collecting, and I think when more people see it, you may be right. They may want that game. Then the next thing you know, they put a Galaga for sale, and they got 30 people wanting that one game. So maybe you're right, but at the same time, we got games that we can go play that that we would never see or have any access to regardless. Even at auction, sometimes, you know, you don't really get to play them much. You just bid on them, and you're always getting outbid anyway. So you might as well go to the barcade. Uh, you can go in the afternoons when there's it's not as rowdy. <laughs> there you go. Well, and, and Tim, I mean, here's the deal: is that I don't. I think the biggest thing is that these barcade owners need to realize they need to invest in tech. Okay, you have to have techs on staff. You've got to get these games fixed. And Tim, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them buying up inventory, but from a private collector standpoint, it's frustrating when I'm going to buy a game and the game prices have gone up a lot. I mean, right. but that is life. That's and obviously, Tim, a lot of these games they're not making any more of. So, I mean, that's part of it, too. And so, I mean, games are going to continue to rise regardless, I think, of barcades, like you mentioned. We're going to continue to see prices go up. And so I don't think it's necessarily the barcades causing it, but they are part of that group that's kind of inflating the prices right now. And, Tim, the more people that play the games, the more people that want them, too. I mean, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, you go to a barcade, you play a game, maybe you want an arcade game for your house. And so maybe in a way that helps. Um, you it know, definitely some should help sell as well. selling if you have a game that you want to sell. Oh, the one at the barcade cost thirteen hundred dollars. Mine's right. at least worth a thousand. Right. But I get what you're saying too. So, what about you guys? What do you think about the barcade situation? And do you attend one? How do you like it? So, what say you? Okay, so let's go ahead and look over to the live chat, Tim. Great debate tonight. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys will chime in uh, here in the live chat. Or if you guys are watching this on Facebook, Tim, because we post these on Facebook as well, chime in below in the comment section. Let us know what you think. So, Tim, let's talk about some of the live chat that we have tonight on this debate topic. And I'll go ahead and and we'll uh, go back to our regular camera here. Uh, Let's see. I feel so free. Uh, YouTube Punk says it's a good thing. So YouTube Punk agrees with you. So there you go. Um... Uh, let's see. Super Goya says, I fail to see how barcades are bad for the community. YouTube Punk says, uh, well, they could limit the supply of games in your area, Tim. That was one of my points, mm-hmm. of course. Uh, Super Goya says, I think some barcades have hours where the bar part is closed until a certain time. That okay. may be a good compromise uh, to where you stay open all the time, but we don't serve alcohol at a certain time. So basically, at that point, you're in an arcade, right? Right. For like half the day. And well, then that may be night. a great idea. Exactly. That may be a good time to do it. Uh, Tim took the words out of my chat. Uh, YouTube Punk says, better than cat pee. You mentioned that. They're bigger than cat pee. Um, so there you go. Uh, YouTube Punk's last thing, make arcades great again. So there we go. Now, Tim, let's uh, let's go back a little bit here and talk about um, what we were initially talking about in the fact that, you know, kind of the barcade yeah. um, part. And we'll do some of those comments from Facebook real quick. So uh, I'll throw those up here. Rusty from the uh, Question and Answer Podcast, Tim, says, I am willing to bet that if someone gets sued for using Barcade in the description of their business, they will be able to win the suit by proving it was a generic term in use before the bar in New York opened. However, they would still have to go through the cost of the lawsuit. I don't see the New York company uh, as having much ground to stand on. Chloe says, normally I'd say they're right, but in many common proprietary eponyms like Kleenex, Xerox, Band-Aid, etc., they aren't names derived that aren't names from derived from common elements of the product described. Barcade might be correct that they're the chain using the term since 2004 to describe their business, but the portmanteau of bar and arcade is too common. Uh, it's so common it's probably indefensible as a trademark. And that's what I think the thing is, Tim. When we think of Kleenex, we think of Xerox, we think of Band-Aid. Those are all things that are kind. They're not. They're not, there's nothing about a, the word Kleenex that makes you think tissue. Right. You know what I'm saying? But when you say barcade, you think about a barcade. Right. right. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's kind of, it's already the description of it. Robert says, at least as far back as 1878, courts have been willing to recognize that trademarks can become generic and then cease to exist as trademarks, of course. Uh, Ryan says, bar arcades are a dime a dozen now. They will get over it when the bubble pops. Quite possible. And there is there is a chance where it could be a fad at this yeah, point. Not- not a, not a lot of them even succeed in the first year. Exactly. Todd says, most of them are too loud and too full. You cannot hear the game over all the music and noise. Then there is the game ha 
dogs. Oh, and they're overpriced, but not all of them. And Tim, there are some where I've seen uh, them charging as much as a dollar a game. Wow. And uh, that seems really high for me. It I does. don't know about you. So. Got to be a quarter. There you go. So uh, that is tonight's arcade debate. Thank you guys for uh, for joining us for that. It was a lot of fun. Except for Dragon Slayer, it's got to be 50 cents. Yeah, Dragon Slayer has got to be 50 cents, I agree. So. Okay, Tim. Well, that was fun. There you go. <laughs> who says their beer Any doesn't? Oh, who says their beer doesn't smell like cat pee? Oh, <laughs> so there you go. Or taste uh, like. Good point. Good point. What? Or, or taste, taste like, like it. exactly. Or taste like it. Correct. Mm-hmm. So, okay, let's continue on here, guys. And uh, one of the things Tim we teased like on uh, social media pages was that we were going to talk about Pinball Arcade tonight. Yes. And the big news about Pinball Arcade, Tim, is that Pinball Arcade is losing over 50 Bally and Williams tables on June 30th. Okay. Okay. And so Farsight Studios has announced that their licensing agreement for the Williams and Bally pinball trademarks will not be renewed. Tables manufactured by those companies will no longer be pur- purchasable within the pinball arcade on all platforms, Tim. So, tables include everything from Medieval Madness to Black Knight 2000 to licensed titles such as Doctor Who and Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Pinball, uh, pinball Arcade will be reduced from the current 95 tables to just 33, Tim, by taking out all the Williams and Valley games. So Farsight has stated that previous owners of the tables will still be able to play them indefinitely, which is why, Tim, this is a public service announcement. You need to buy them while you can. Buy the Valley and Williams tables on Pinball Arcade while you can. Right. Okay. And so, Tim, uh, YouTube Punk actually on Twitter asked us, well, why don't you guys talk about like what your favorites are? Okay. And so, Tim, here, here we, we go. go. What are our favorites? And, Tim, I, I have named this uh, segment... The Arcade Repair Tips Totally Unscientific List of the Best Williams Valley Tables Leaving Pinball Arcade at the End of the Month in No Particular Order. Okay. <laughs> so, did I get all that in there? Yeah. Okay, there you go. So, Tim, I um, asked everybody on staff okay. at Arcade Repair Tips. Everybody. It's a pretty big staff. Yeah, what? Six people. Okay, okay. so I asked all six of us, um, you know, what tables are the best ones on, you know, in Pinball Arcade right now for the Bally and Bally Williams titles? And so um, the tables we all agreed on, Tim... Monster right. Bash, 1998. Okay, I put the year by there, so that's when they came out. Medieval Madness. Yes. Okay, Star Trek Next Generation. Oh, sure. We of all course. agreed on that one. Uh, Adam's Family, of course, Tim, you can't have like a top table list without that one. The Getaway High Speed 2. We all okay. thought was very good. And, of course, The Machine Bride of Pinbot. Yes. I mean, you yes. just can't... You can't... Th- those are fantastic tables. Not the original Pinbot, the Bride of Pinbot. Bride of Pinbot. That's our favorite. Right, exactly. So, Tim, you added some in there yeah. that you also liked, and you mentioned Fishtails I do like and fish Space tails. Shuttle. So tell us something, that, tell us why you like Fishtails and why you like Space Shuttle. Uh, I like Fishtails because of the theme. You it's like the, the fishing kind of theme? fishing theme and stuff, and it makes me want to go fishing. But Space Shuttle was neat because it had the 13-ball multi-ball. Well, you're right? thinking about Apollo 13, I think. Okay, am I? I get yeah, Apollo 13 is a little bit different. Spa- I did get it mixed up. Yeah, you got it mixed up. Okay. All right, Space Shuttle, though, again, the same theme, though, I like. Because you see a how- lot of Space Shuttles around. Yeah. It was obviously a popular game for the time. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I can tell you that. It and it's 1984, experience. so that's right about the time I really was starting to play uh, pinball and stuff. So, I do remember... Planet, but you're right. I am thinking about Apollo 13 yeah, with the 13 balls. Exactly. Is that a Williams game? Um, I can't remember. No, I think it was. I think it's a different Sega. game. Somebody will. Know. I think it's a Sega game. So if I remember correctly. What so else? Tim, I I put um I have uh, four here extras. No good gophers. Yes. Circus Voltaire. Okay. Uh, Theater of Magic and Who Done It. Okay. And so let me go through these. And I almost said Who Done It. Yeah. We it's like one of those games we didn't discover till later. Exactly. And we and the more we play it, the more we realize is how deep it is and how fun it is. Yeah. That's and uh, let's talk about that. So No Good Gophers, Tim, I believe is a Pat Lawler game. Um, I love. I'm not a big golf fan, but I like the fact that the gophers kind of come after you. Yeah. And you're hitting the gophers. And it's kind of a like, Caddyshack. Exactly. It's very Caddyshack esque, uh-huh. and you do play nine holes, and I like the holes. It's one of my favorite tables. It's great. Circus Voltaire, Tim, just fantastic. Yeah. I'm I mean, it's just, I mean, it's a different table. It's got a different feel to it. Uh, you've got the ringmaster. You have to defeat him. There's all this cool stuff. And uh, uh, really like Circus Voltaire, Tim. And then Theater of Magic, of course, is another good one. Uh, same designer on both of those, which I can't remember his name at the moment. But same designer. Theater of Magic, just because I'm a big Magic fan. So, okay. I mean, uh, Papa Duke, right? John Papa Duke, yes, I believe, on both those. Fun to play. So, there you go. And then um, Who Done It, of course, like mm-hmm. Tim mentioned. So, a uh, Barry Ausler game, Tim. But the reason we like Who Done It is because it's kind of like the pinball version of Clue, Clue. or mm-hmm. pinball version of a murder mystery. Right. Okay. And it's a lot of fun. I The only thing, Tim, about having one in my game room is that the um, auto shoot, like, let's say you lose the ball and you have a uh, you have a shoot again. Um, 
it does this little like machine gun animation on it. Oh, okay. That makes me kind of weary about having kids around with it. Okay. But I love the game. I love like so you play a case, you have to figure out who did it, and then if you figure it out, you go to the roof, you play this cool multi ball thing, and then you, you kinda go case by case. Right. And it's re- and it randomizes, it's really cool. It's a great concept. Love who done it, Tim. Mm-hmm. I've, I've heard that the reels that are in the play field though are just a pain to keep working. Maybe so. So uh, I mean I'm not sure about that, but uh, we've anyway. never owned one, but we've always wanted one. Exactly. So there you go. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'm looking. Uh, somebody says the lighting is great on circus. Now, Louie, actually, uh, he gave us a couple. Uh, Tim, I think he gave he listed three when we initially did it, but all three of them were in the tables we all agreed on. Okay. So, Louie, if you have any others that you want to throw in here, I know you're you're in the live chat right now. If you have any others you want to throw in here, uh, please throw them into the live chat. But we're going to go ahead and go. Mark, Tim, said scared stiff. Yes, I okay, thought of that Okay, Alvira Pen, of course. Junkyard. Mm-hmm. Attack from Mars. Terminator 2 Judgment Day and okay. Pinbot. Now, uh, let's talk about these for a second here. I'll, I'll throw them up here. So there's the one. Scared Stiff. Junk. Oh, Tim. The Arcade Repair Tips totally unscientific list of the best Williams Valley tables leaving Pinball Arcade at the end of the month in no particular order. Sorry. No particular order. Okay, there we go. So Mark said Scared Stiff, Junkyard, Attack from Mars, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, and Pinbot. So Tim, uh, anything about any of these tables you want to comment on? Oh, just... Um... I can see, you know, and another thing we're talking about, what would be fun to play digitally? Yes. And I bet that Terminator and Junkyard really are fun like that. You know, um, Junkyard and Attack from Mars, for me, the the play fields are a little too open, like the middle of the play fields are too uh-huh. open, and that's something, for some reason, I'm not a big fan of. Okay. Like, I like having stuff close to hit and far to hit, you know? And I feel like with Junkyard and Attack from Mars, like, everything's further back on the field. Oh, okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there's not a whole lot of close I targets. Like to, and I like to play games like that. I like the speed. Right, exactly. So, I mean, but I like, but the reason I like close targets is because it's good for kids. Yeah. Like, I've got X-Men and Wolverine's, like, right here. They're right there. And kids can mm-hmm. hit Wolverine no problem. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, I like that. Uh, it, it allows you, it gives you something to hit when you can't hit anything else. If you're having problems hitting other things, just close targets are nice. So, with Attack from Mars and Junkyard, though, there's a lot of deep targets further back into the field which is fine but it's just not what i prefer i noticed that mark mentioned terminator 2 and he has a terminator he has a terminator 2 terminator 2 is a lot of fun it is a great game and then tim um he also said of course scared stiff which is an elvira pen is great third one's coming at some point right Uh so and then uh pinbot the original pinbot right his list so uh let's see here and then eric tim from the question and answer podcast he sent attack from mars just like uh mark did Bram Stoker's Dracula, which yeah. is surprisingly fun if you've never played it before. Yes. It's really good. Whitewater Tim is pretty good. Fishtails, like you mentioned. Pinbot, like Mark mentioned. Eight Ball Deluxe Firepower and Xenon Tim, and those three are really good. Like I, I don't, mm-hmm. I think sometimes um, like uh, Firepower may not get the love that it deserves from some people, but it is a lot of fun to me. Yes. So, and then uh, Eight Ball Deluxe, of course, and Xenon, Tim. Um, um, I mean, the, there's so many great tables, Tim. It's almost hard to make lists. Right. So that's why you need to go download them all. That's right. Before June 30th. Get them all. Before June 30th. Before the end of, before the end of uh, this month. But the next time that uh, we do a live show, Tim. They'll be gone. They'll be gone. So there you go. So get them on the platform of your choice, Tim. Pinball Arcade is pretty much available on everything. Nintendo Switch. Um, you know, uh, let's see. Xbox. PlayStation 4. It's probably even available on your toaster. So, okay. you know, so you can get it for pretty much any platform that you want. Uh, and then, uh, Tim here, uh, let's see, YouTube Punk says Safe Cracker. Okay. Oh, good guy. So Safe Cracker is another good one. That's a really good one as well. Uh, Tim, you can play Safe Cracker if you go to Texas Pinball Festival. They usually have That's one there true. every year. So, And you can earn a token. Right. <laughs> so, which is kind of cool. So, But again, guys, kind of a public cer- uh, service announcement on that. Now, Tim, there's an interview with the head of Farsight Studios, and he says that they may bring some of the Capcom tables to Pinball Arcade. Okay. Okay, so Big Bang Bar. And they're not going away. No. They're just they're just losing their license for the Williams. Exactly. Valley. They're still going to have the 33 tables that they have that aren't Williams Valley licensed. But obviously, Tim, they need a way to get more tables in there. For so sure. So why not license the Capcom stuff, right? And so, I mean, what all is Capcom? Big Bang Bar, Break Shot. I'm trying to think of some other ones that are on there. Kingpin, which is one that's, uh, that... Um, uh, oh, the uh, circus pinball people are doing, and then um, I mean, there's a couple of Capcom tables you've probably played. You know, I mean, right. I remember all of them, but they're uh, you know they weren't in business very long, Tim. They they didn't seem like they did produce those several tables, and so some of those maybe come to pinball was arcade. A street to take Fighter place. was a no, that wasn't actually that was a Gottlieb. I Gottlieb, think. Okay. yeah, that was before they got into pinball. Okay, so there you go. But um, so that may be coming pretty soon. But as Big well. Bang Bar would be worth it. 
Right, exactly. So um, I don't know. That's just what he said. Maybe a possibility, but it's worth you know checking out at some point. Imagine Tim, if you bought all of your Williams Valley tables that you wanted, and you had all your Capcom tables, and you had all your Stern tables in there. Yeah. I mean, you can play almost any pinball table that you wanted. So. But you need to get the Valley one Williams ones now. Right now, that's okay. exactly correct. But Tim, I don't think this is going. I mean, I think it's going to hurt pinball arcade, but they're not going anywhere. No. I still think it's a great platform. And Tim, you know, the one thing I do say about um, about Pinball Arcade is that if nothing else, it allows you to learn the rules of a pinball machine better than anything else. Exactly. And so even though it may not play like a real pinball machine, you can learn the rules. You can learn what the shots are for every game. Right. That's how I learned how to play a Bright of Pinball. Right. You know, I would have never known if I hadn't played in Pinball Arcade. Awesome. Like how to how to hit the the billion point shot, right. you know, and stuff like that. And so you learn that stuff. That's the best part of uh, pinball arcade is really learning the rules behind the games. Playing the games is fun, but they don't play like a real pinball table, obviously. But by learning the rules, you can get better at the game as a whole. So. Sounds good. So there you go. So guys, that was the arcade repair tips. Totally unscientific list of the best Williams Valley tables. Leaving pinball arcade at the end of the month in no particular order. Did they get all in there. Yeah. Okay. Good. So there you it's go. It's a good thing it's written right. There. I know. I had to read it. So that's how it is. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so Tim, uh, let's uh, go ahead and wrap up here with just a couple of things. And the first one here, Tim, is the Southern Fried Game Room Expo 2018. We've been to this show. Yes. What was it, two years ago now? Three years ago? About three years ago. Three years ago, something like that. So, um, But it is this weekend. June oh. 8th through the 10th at the Marriott Renaissance Waverly in Atlanta, Georgia. Visit Southern, Southern Fried Game Room Expo, uh, dot com for more information. Tim, this is a family-friendly pinball arcade classic tabletop RPG and console gaming event. Family-friendly, unlike that barcade, Tim. <laughs> and uh, with more than 250-plus games set on free play, the weekend also features special guests. Uh, Steve Ritchie's going to be there, Tim, I believe, uh, among others. Uh, fun and educational programs, gaming tournaments, movie screenings, and a swap meet. Tim, if you are in or around the Atlanta Georgia area, you should be there. Right. Okay. And not only should you be there, but our friends Eric and Rusty from the Question and Answer podcast are going to be there. All right. Broadcasting live. <laughs> Broadcasting live. Exactly. So if you guys can't make it, but you want to know what's happening at the event, make sure you tune in to our Facebook, Twitter feeds. We'll be posting links where you can listen to them. Tim, all of that will be available to listen on our, on our Spreaker page. Like speaker with an R. Spreaker, okay. okay? And we'll be posting those links on our social media pages. But you can, of course, go to spreaker.arcaderepairtips.com to listen to those feeds once they go live. Okay, so good stuff. I mean, it's really oh, cool. Yeah. You can go back and watch our videos that we shot there to get an idea of what it's like. You can, and, and uh, we have uh, all of that stuff out there, Tim. That you can. Uh, we always keep the archive of all of the stuff that we shoot on the floor at different events, and you can find that, of course, right here on YouTube. So, But it's a great event. Again, Southern Fried Gaming Expo, Tim, but southernfriedgameroomexpo.com if you want to get more details about the event. And Tim, I mean, where else are you going to play a lot of games like that? Nowhere. Nowhere, uh, exactly. 250 plus? Not, that, not in Atlanta that weekend. Exactly. Anyway. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So make sure you guys come out, more play than, some games, have some fun. It's great. Event. It's more than the biggest barcade in Atlanta. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, Tim. And then just a reminder here, some more housekeeping stuff. We want your arcade-related videos. Yes. Want some free advertising for your YouTube channel? We're looking for people to submit short videos, 10 minutes or less, about arcade-related topics. Send your link. Of your video to questions at arcadepairtips.com and our staff will review it. If we like it, we'll use it during one of our live show episodes. Make sure you put a plug-in for your channel so people will know where to find you. We look forward to seeing your submissions. And no submissions this month, Tim, but we are always looking for people to submit uh, you know, uh, YouTube videos that we can put here and feature on the live shows and drive more traffic to your channel. Because, Tim, we want everybody to be, like I said, uh, part of the arcade YouTube video community, right? Right. As so, long as they don't drive the price up. Exactly. <laughs> as long as they're not driving the prices up. That's exactly correct. So, uh, anyway, uh, let's continue here, Tim. Contact information for us, guys. Uh, general email questions can go to questions at arcaderepairtips.com. If you put live show on the subject, you will get it mentioned on the show. Questions at ArcadeRepairTips.com comes to me and Tim directly. We have our YouTube page, guys. You're on it right now. That's YouTube.ArcadeRepairTips.com. And comments from the last live show will be covered on the next episode. Tim, that one about the plastic bezel came straight from the comment section of the previous show. Awesome. So there you go. Um, and then uh, of course we have our podcast here. Podcast at ArcadeRepairTips.com. And Tim, that is for Eric and Rusty. We mentioned they're going to be at the Sunfry Gaming Expo. If you guys want to write them an email while they're there, you can do that at podcast at ArcadeRepairTips.com. And of course we have their iTunes page. iTunes.ArcadeRepairTips.com Stitcher.ArcadeRepairTips.com for their Stitcher page. Guys, if you haven't left them a review, leave them a review. Yes, It doesn't please. take but a second. Listen to one episode, leave them a review, tell them what you think. They want the feedback. They love it. And then of course we have our social media 
pages at facebook.arcaderepairchips.com and Tim, everything from Facebook also gets posted on Twitter at twitter.arcaderepairchips.com and Tim, we want to thank Louie who was in the chat tonight with us and posts a lot of stuff on our Facebook page. We want to thank Mark for all the stuff he posts on the Facebook page and for giving us his list of the games in Pinball Arcade that he likes. We want to thank them both for your contributions as well as Eric and Rusty for doing the Question and Answer podcast. Tim, their latest episode dropped earlier this week. Oh. So uh, if you guys oh. want to listen to a brand new episode of the Question and Answer podcast Good along deal. with live episodes coming this weekend. So, I mean, we've got a lot of content here at Arcade Repair Tips, Tim. A it's lot. not just you and me anymore. Oh. There's a lot of people around here. A lot of things happening. So, and we want to thank everybody who's involved with it. Like I said, Eric, Rusty, Mark, and Louie. Thank you guys so much for your contributions. Okay. Uh, anything else that we have here, Tim? Any other last minute things? I do want to mention that we got pictures from people who got prizes from the last show. Yeah. Saying that they got their prizes and they're very happy that they got them. Of course, last time, Tim, what did we celebrate? Our 10-year anniversary. Ten year anniversary of Arcade Repair Tips, and we gave away a lot of prizes. And a lot of people got them, took pictures with them, and sent them to us, and we thank, thank you, for you for that. that. So, I mean, we're glad that those arrived to you uh, when they did. Uh, Tim, anything else that you want to mention? Last show was fun. I mean, I yeah. like the 10th anniversary show. Um, probably the rap was uh, a, little, uh, <laughs> a, a little maybe embarrassing in a if, way. If you want to find out what happened to me on the – California Highway 101 and the California Highway Patrol stick around for the after show. And uh, what was the other thing? The most expensive house you've ever stayed Most expensive house ever. And that's what we're going to talk about? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Oh, well, guys, we want to thank you guys for uh, hanging on through the entirety of the live show tonight. Tim, I felt like I, I got to a rough start, but I kind of got eased into it. You yeah. Know? It's been uh, a long day. Uh, but uh, we're glad to always be with you guys on the first Thursday of every month. A lot of, of people in the chat room today. Thank y'all for. Uh, being here and participating for those of you who watch live and for those of you who are now watching the replay later maybe on facebook uh, please leave us a comment. Let us know how you liked it. Absolutely. Uh, Tim, it looks like the next live show will be July 5th. Okay. Right okay. After are you the gonna be, I was about to say, are you going to be around? I should be around. Uh, that'll make it easy because yeah. I got the 4th off. You got the 4th off. July 4th, of course, I Independence, may take the fifth off. Independence Day here in the United States. So, yeah, if you take the 5th off, then you can, uh, you know, just I don't may, plead the 5th. That's plead, all I'm saying. I think I'll plead, <laughs> will plead the 5th. So, July 5th will be the next I'll live show, guys. tell my boss. I think I'll be sick that day. Yeah, we want to thank everybody for joining us tonight and for listening. And, uh, and uh, stay tuned for the after show if you want to hear about Tim's exploits with the uh, California Highway Patrol and the most expensive house he stayed in. Other than that, Tim, we thank you guys for joining us tonight. And remember here at Arcade Repair Tips, when we fix the game, we, we play, play the, the game. game. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you in the after show.
And we're back for the yeah. after show. Totally unrelated to arcade repair. Unscripted, unedited, and uncensored. Oh, is it oh, uncensored? Well, we'll censor it. Oh, okay, <laughs> I was about to say. Uh, first off, we want to thank you, Two Punk, for the $5. I didn't see it until after yeah. the show ended, so thank you for throwing uh, uh, you know $5 our way. Tim, we're toying. I've, I've been thinking about this idea. I'm going to run it by you, and we're running by the live show audience here. What about, like, every month we say for $5 you can have a production credit on the live show? Okay. And then at the beginning of the live show, we put a list of everybody who gave, who gave and we, we list them as a producer. Yeah. You like that? Something like that. If people, if you're going to, if, you, if that interests you, let me know uh, and we'll do it. I don't know if I want to go that route, but um, if we do that, Tim, we may be able to make it ad free. Maybe. Maybe some, some way to do it. So, I mean, that'd be kind of nice too, you know, not having to have the ad. So, if you guys would be interested in that, if we get enough people to, for $5 each, do a production credit, then maybe we'll go that route. That's pretty so. much less than a cup of coffee a day. Exactly. And then you get your name on the front of the show. Like, so where that countdown is, Tim, we'll put like um, this episode presented by and your name here. For 20 games of Pac Man, you could sponsor that. Right? <laughs> 20 games of Pac Man. There you go. So, uh, if it's something that interests you, let us know in the comments section or in the live chat and we'll talk about it. But thank you, YouTube Punk, for throwing $5 our way, regardless, Tim, of the yes. production credit. So, that's thank you sure. very much. Okay, Tim, so we have our, our arcade repair tips live show uh, here. And, uh, Tim, the first thing that I've got on the outline here is how's our 10 bucks doing? Well,. That doesn't oh. sound good already. <laughs> what goes up must come down, but okay. I got good news. Okay. <laughs> All right. The good news is... I love this. <laughs> well, I had up, only bought one stock. Okay. Right? It went up, and I sold it. I remember this. Okay. Right? Yeah. Was it the marijuana related stock? Yes. Okay. C-R-O-N. Okay. And um, but it's not just, you know, potheads. They, they, they medical marijuana. It's a big company, company sure. that does this. Sure. Well, here's what's cool about it. Um, it went drastically down, like wow. down. Wow. Yeah. What happened? And, uh, well, just, uh, now I've been hearing about the celebrity endorsement. Like now celebrities have their own brands. Yeah. Have you heard about this? I've heard a little bit about like it. Like yes. Lily Nelson, of course, right. uh, Chong from Cheech yeah. and Chong, you know, has his and, uh, or maybe so, it was Cheech, one or the other. What's cool about it though, what happened is, uh, while on the dip, as we call it, I bought nine more stocks to go with it. And tonight it is climbing back up rapidly. Okay, so because, where are we at right now? <laughs> because uh, I think we're at probably at about eight bucks, but it will probably go a lot higher tomorrow if those of you up north that are watching and uh, can testify. There is a vote tonight in the Canadian Senate whether to make it legal in the whole country. Really, I did not realize this tonight. So people are watching us when that's going on. Yeah, <laughs> so. If, um, but just because it, it, if it passes, which they think it will, there's, they do the same thing that us Americans do. They tagged on about 20 more things with that bill. Well, sure. It's called the marijuana bill, but it has all this other stuff attached to it. Sure. So they don't think the that pork. the whole bill they'll will go pass. back. It'll go back to the representatives. But the main thing is if the marijuana part passes it tonight, Stock will go up because eventually it will probably. So I guess passed. they don't have the line item veto either. That, I don't know yeah, exactly. You know what I mean, because that's something that, of course, the president here doesn't have mm -hmm. is the line item veto. He can't say, "I this, don't want this, this I don't uh, want this, I don't want this." He he has to veto the whole thing. So that's where we're at. Went sold, which made profit. Reinvested at, and I bought it lower. Hoping for good news tomorrow. Maybe by the time some of the guys see now, this. Now, my family, we have I a lot of... don't think I'll be buying a new house, but... Yeah, now, I have a lot of family in Canada. Mm -hmm. And they're going at the first uh, two weeks in July. Okay. So they could maybe purchase marijuana legally in yeah. houses. Is that what you're <laughs> saying? Maybe <laughs> so. Well, I think it's going to take about six months to, to actually be legal, legal. But oh, the vote, gotcha. the big vote is tonight in the Senate where it's close. So... There you go. We will see how the stock does. And I'm pretty, I'm only interested in it on a stock basis. So <laughs> Exactly. There you go. Well, I mean, Tim. It was 10 bucks at the time. If the legalization continues to go the way the way it's been going here with states continuing to legalize yeah. it, that stock can only go up is yeah. the way I see it. It so. definitely is uh, a long-term hold is what I was told from the beginning. Right. And the fact it went down didn't really shake me much. I, in fact, I bought more. There you go. Okay. Buy on the dip. There you go. <clears throat> so Tim, the next thing on the outline, we got our we got our ten dollars is now less than ten dollars. Yeah, <laughs> but that's okay. We're hoping we're hoping for big returns. Next thing on the outline, Toys R Us liquidation one month left. So I was listening to some employees talk, and they're very excited about 
30 days basically left. End of June is what they're saying. Okay. Our, our store here is going to close. I do not know if that's all stores. So is it finally getting to some decent prices? Yes. How much off? Pretty much everything is at least 50% off. Okay. So okay. we're getting down. As far, yeah, yeah. We are getting down. and so Not just the Christmas wrapping paper. and No, no, no. We um, Pretty much everything is at least 40 most things 50 and some things even 60. Was there any point. game things left? Uh, yeah. I mean, I bought the Karate Champ. I posted... Here. I gotta come over here. Yeah, you see, not arcade related, and here we go. So I'm gonna start talking about arcades. I posted, um... Yeah. <clears throat> these guys. Um, this is the Karate Champ uh, little mini arcade. This thing was $15, usually mm-hmm. 30 So with the 50% off, and, uh... <clears throat> Tim, this is actually the... You'll notice that it has a joystick and two buttons. Yeah. That's because this is the NES version of the game. It's apparently not the arcade version. Ah. And so <clears throat> that's why it is set up like that. But, um, yeah, this was $15 right now. So, uh, but if you can find them. Um, my Toys R Us, by the time they hit that mark, uh, they had already sold all of their Burger Time. They had already sold a lot of other ones. And so, right. But they had Karate Champ and they had Bad Dudes. So I was able to get those two for a halfway decent price. So, yes, uh, even video games, Tim, are at 50% off now. Gotcha. So, I mean, whatever you got, uh, whatever's going on. And, Tim, I did buy a souvenir. I bought a couple of these guys. Um, just oh, Jeffrey. For sen- sentimental purposes. Um, they were 50% off as well, but Jeffrey... Uh-huh. So there you go, and actually has this tag on them. And Tim, I, I did see something that was interesting. It does have a Toys R Us on it, but it actually says that it says part of the Toys R Us family. But um, guess who owns this trademark? Who does? Jeffrey LLC. Oh, who knows? So it's actually its own trademark. It's actually its own company. Okay. So, so but um, I don't know what's going to happen. I cannot name my child Jeffrey LLC. <laughs> I guess not. But I don't know what's going to happen to poor Jeffrey here and Toys R Us. But um, I'm sure they're going to have a. Um, uh, foreclosure auction type thing, uh, you know, bankruptcy auction, and somebody's going to get Toys R Us, they're going to get Jeffrey, and they're going to get everything else. Shells so. and bins. What? <clears throat> I want some shells and bins or Yeah, something. I mean, you can go get them. They're, they're selling the fixtures. Wow. So they're selling everything in that place, so that's for sure. <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Louis says, my local has Karate Champ and Bad Dudes at 50% off. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Have they sold the game kiosk yet? Um, ours didn't have any. I kiosk. don't remember. Yeah, like ours did not have any kiosks, which I thought mm-hmm. was interesting. Um, so I don't know if they are other ones. Like, good question. <clears throat> that is a good question. I have not seen anything. That's from probably, John. That would probably not be on sale till later. Right. A lot of here's the deal about like the fixtures and stuff. All that stuff has to stay there pretty much until the last, last couple of days. Day, yeah. <clears throat> now, as they clear them out, they are getting rid of them. So, like, of the game cabinets right now, they're only using about half of them for games that they still have left to sell. And so some of those have been pulled and taken home at mm. ours. But um, they are selling the fixtures. So, Tim, you know, like, if you want a shelf, like, one of the video game shelves to display all your video games mm-hmm. in, you can get one of those. Wow. I mean, and uh, somebody bought three of them at ours, I think. So there you go. But, um, you know, if you, if you want to do that. Um, but the game kiosk at ours, at least, there's none around. So... I don't know. Uh, other ones may have them, and there was no, we never had kiosk at ours. I don't know why. Like we just didn't have the, like we didn't have like an Xbox up or a PS4 right. or anything no. like that. Not even a Switch. Not you in know? a long time. They do at Best Buy. Like mm-hmm. Best Buy has all of them set up, but I, like our Toys R Us has never hasn't had those set up. But guys, it's all, I don't know what's going to happen to Toys R Us after this, and so you know well, that's who's why I bought, buy the, it? I bought the Jeffries. What KB Toys going to make a comeback? The know. question is, I don't know how much the name and things are going to be worth in bankruptcy. You know, like, who's going to pay it? What's it? I mean, it's going to be an auction, so some company's going to scoop it up. And here's the deal, guys. Circuit City isn't dead. Like, a company owns Circuit City, the, the name. The company owns Montgomery Ward. Like, people own those names, but a lot of times they haven't brought them back or they haven't used them for anything. You gotcha. know? But, I mean, those names get sold in, in these auctions. And, I mean, if somebody wanted to, they could rebuild Toys R Us. But the problem is, is that at this point, they'd have to rebuild it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? They could not use the existing infrastructure. All that has to go into paying what they owe to their debtors. Wow. So, so yeah. I mean, but um, a great example is what happened with Gander Mountain. Yes. Okay, so Gander Mountain, uh, a lot of people don't know, uh, the CEO of Camping World, Marcus Lamon, is also uh, the host of The Prophet on CNBC. If you guys watch that, mm-hmm. he bought the name Gander Mountain mountain like, okay and he bought the trademarks and everything like that but he did not buy any of the stores or anything so what he had to do was he had to go to each individual landlord and strike deals wow okay so he had in like so they're gonna reopen ours he's renamed it gander what is it uh, gander outdoors oh that's what it's gonna be i didn't know that so ours is about to reopen 
Wow. But he had to go around and strike deals with each individual uh, uh, landowner and each individual building owner to see to, to keep them open because they had to liquidate all the inventory inside to pay the debtors. Right. Okay. So that's why it's taking so long to get all these stores back up and running is because basically. You get the name, but you start from scratch. Interesting. And so somebody could do that with Toys R Us. I don't know if that's going to happen. But Gander Mountain is a great example well, of how you can do that. Having a building already is not so much from scratch. I mean, you're off. You're off but you're still, you still have to buy inventory because all the inventory oh, is true. gone. And that costs money. I mean, how much How much, uh, How much? much inventory do you think a store like uh, Gander Outdoors has oh, in one goodness. store? Like how much worth? Yeah. I mean, it's a ton. Several couple of million. million. Several million. So, I mean, you know, I mean, in one store. And so uh, you have that cost. So the question is, is there going to be somebody who wants to buy the name and incur all the cost? All right. I don't know. You have to get a good deal on the building. There you go. So, okay, Tim, let's move away from that, though. Just please check your local stores. Go get some good deals. There's lots of good stuff. And, you know, Tim. Um, let us know what you score. That's right. Mm-hmm. And my daughter's birthday is coming up next month. So this uh, is like, a, you know, I've been uh, buying, buying, buying. So, um, but uh, it is sad to go in, though. I mean, it's just sad. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Any, you know, uh, I was telling the lady. I checked me out the other day that the first place I ever wrote a check out was Toys R Us. Wow. That Toys R Us. Wow. So, um, just to give you an I mean, that one's been there a long time. So, but anyway. <clears throat> Let's continue on here, Tim. I'm getting sentimental. Uh, graduation time. Yeah. Congratulations to anybody who's graduating. If you guys are in the chat and you're graduating, high congratulations. High school, college. High school, college. Kindergarten. I know, I know several high schoolers gradu- graduating this year, a couple of college uh, friends uh, graduating this year as well, so we just want to throw a congratulations out there just because I know people are graduating and we've had a lot of fun with it. So, um, let's see, I got a couple of things here on the Toys R Us thing before we uh, shift gears too much. Um, Louis says, I think someone will take the name online. Throw Toys R Us store. Um, those Toys R Us stores are way too big, just way too much real estate to pay for now. And Tim, I do agree, is like Maybe most of the so. stores are probably too big. If they could condense the stores, and make them about half the size and take and only sell like the money making stuff i think they could be in a better spot you know but here's the the deal guys people these companies invest in um you know like these capital these uh, you know venture capital people invest in these companies and tim a lot of times all they do is they like try to pump up revenue and they'll resell it for more than they bought it for and then you get that process over and over again and eventually they just get to a point where they can't do that anymore yep you know and you get a bankruptcy option and those people still make back their money because, I mean, they'll sell all, all of the stuff and they'll end up probably being, in, you know, in the mm-hmm. black when it's all said and done. But, I mean, the, the thing about it is, is that it hurts the companies. And the employees that work there out. Exactly. You know, Tim, I mean, you, you know, I've, I've worried about Chuck E. Cheese being like that, to be honest with you, because we've seen a lot. We've seen it change a lot of hands over mm-hmm. the years, it seems like so. But, I mean, it's hard to find people who are going to invest in a company and actually invest in it nowadays. Right. Like actually going to take the time build the infrastructure out, do things to improve business. It's right. just hard to find that. So, anyway. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Vulture capitalists. That's a good way to say it. Well, I mean, not all venture capitalists are bad. Right. There are venture capitalists that actually invest in something and see it all the way through. Tim, Shark Tank. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, like those guys on there a lot of times, they, I mean, they, they're they in with their companies. You know what I'm saying? They stick with them the entire time. Sometimes they'll sell their equity in them. They may, but I mean, not all venture capitalists are bad, but a lot of them are out just to turn a quick profit. So that's what it comes down to. Okay, Tim, what else we have here? NBA Finals. Tim, have you been watching any of the NBA Finals? I have been watching some Did you watch it last night? It. I did. Did you notice that uh, it just doesn't seem like the Cleveland Cavaliers can win? No. <laughs> that, well, even when LeBron scores 50 points. Well, that's because that's nobody else is scoring. <laughs> right, exactly. They're missing every shot. Exactly. I mean, but. you're exactly right. But, um, man, I think Golden State Warriors have this locked up, Tim. What do you think? And I do think so. Well, they're 3-0. Three, three and oh. Yeah, I mean, nobody's, nobody's ever, ever come back. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if the Cavaliers come back and win the next one. Unless it is uh, Kevin Durant taking on the Cavaliers all by himself, they m- might could win one more game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what it was last night, basically. Yeah. <laughs> but Kevin Durant will shoot uh, from half court. That's right. Exactly. Every time. Every time. And make it. And make it. So, you know, it's like, uh, it, it, yeah, it's been interesting finals. I really think the best games were the Rockets, and yes. the, that was the championship to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. So this is kind of like the afterthought. The get championship game was the Rockets and the Cavs. The thing about Golden State, though, I mean, Tim, the Golden State. Yeah, the thing about Golden State, though, Tim, is when one guy's off, 
They got like three other guys oh, that yeah. can fill in that position, they, no problem. So like you know, Steph Curry can't play tonight. Don't worry, Kevin Durant's there. Right. You know, you know, I mean, they've just got so many players that can pick up the slack. They do. They don't need. They don't need to do anything. You know, like I mean, not everybody has to play at their tippy top all the time. Exactly. I mean, that's what it really shows is just how good a team they are. But since we're talking about basketball, can you imagine if if they would have stayed on the same team, you would have had Harden, um, Durant, and Westbrook still playing for Oklahoma City? Yep. Can you imagine how good that team would oh, be man. right now? I, it would be good. Yeah. But, I mean, you, <laughs> you know. Imagine that them three playing together would have stayed together. That that would have been a team. But. Absolutely. So, But it has been interesting to watch, Tim. And so, yeah, I watched a little bit of it. It was it was good. But, Tim, I don't want to dwell on that too much. But that kind of steers into your story, right? It steers very much into my story. So that's why I kind of threw it on there. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's segue in. So we got off the plane for uh, Chuck E. Cheese, and I asked my boss. I said, of course, he rents vehicles all the time you know and when right. you're a frequent renter you can get the upgrades and you get good deals and all that stuff so i said which car can we get he said we can get any car out here wow and so i looked over you got and, deal with my company yeah so i said i want the mustang then the convertible mustang over there we'll get that so uh he likes for me to drive because a lot of times he's doing work or on his laptop or something so now, We're, you had a Camaro at one point. Yeah, I did. So, I mean, it's not too far off from a No, it's Mustang. not too far off. Uh, but this was the, the new Mustang where you can change the exhaust sound. And oh, yeah, all I've that. seen You've that. You've seen yeah, those? Yeah, yeah. So, just to tell you, we're driving in a Mustang. We're on the 101. Red, blue, green. Uh, it was a gray, uh, silver. Silver. And uh, convertible. And we didn't have, we had the top up, but we were going down the highway at a cruising speed of about 25, 30 miles an hour. Okay. Okay, because it's California and there's traffic everywhere. Sure. We decided to, uh, we had to come from um, north of San Francisco to almost San Jose. So it's about an hour's drive if there's no traffic. Sure. An hour and a half with traffic. And I knew that the ball game, the first game between the Cavs and Golden State was that night. And we drove right by there, right by the stadium. Oh, nice. So I thought to myself, we better leave a little early. So, because I figured the game was at 7, I was figuring about 4 o'clock on it would be really heavy. Sure. So, about 3 o'clock is when we're getting close to the stadium. And we are traffic everywhere. And all of a sudden, I, we could do the HOV lane because there's two of us. Sure. And I look and I see it has an opening. So, uh, having a little fun. Of course, in the rental car, you always drive uh, extra careful. Yes. You know, and, and take good care of it because it's a rental and you want to do that. Right. <laughs> I squealed the tires and I swung around, <laughs> stomped on it to see what the Mustang would do. And I probably was going uh, from a 30 to about 80 really quick. Um, and I saw the cop lights behind me. Oh. And uh, immediately I thought, well, I have been caught. And I saw a motorcycle cop coming quickly up on me. Uh, and so I'm kind of getting over. He gets between me and the wall. He gets right beside me. And I know he's going to tell me to pull over. So I'm thinking, how am I going to pull over now that's has got traffic again? Where do you go? How do right. you pull over? You know, in Texas, you just get off on the shoulder. There's sure. no shoulders. Right. He says, try to get in that lane. And I said okay like when you pull me over in this lane or over there and he's like i'm not pulling you over i need you to move over I said, okay so i got in the other lane uh, of course everybody's giving everybody space and being real courteous since the cops right there sure here comes another cop beside him so now we got Ponch and John and <laughs> drive riding next to each other, and then for our younger listeners, they go for yeah they go, <laughs> they go forward and there's two more, and then two more, wow. and so now I've got the cop parade and I'm wondering what's going on. I realize about that time these really nice tour buses pull up beside us with the Cleveland Cavalier team escorting them to the stadium. We we're right there at the exit and got to. Uh, wave at LeBron and everybody, even though he could, I couldn't see him. And his uh, short suit. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, that that was funny. That I thought I was getting pulled over by the cops it was actually uh, the escorts to the Cleveland Cavaliers going to the 
basketball game that night. There you go. So you didn't get pulled over. Did not get a ticket. Didn't even get pulled over and got to wave at the Cavs. Okay, so, Tim, I put the amount, switching gears, kind of still on the California trip, I put the amount of the house that you stayed in. A $6.5 million house. Right. So, okay. for those of you who live in California, uh, God bless you, and you are in our thoughts and prayers. <laughs> I don't know how you afford that place. Um, now, if I said I went to a $6.5 million house in Dallas, right. you can think of the show Dallas. Oh, yes. Ranch here in Tyler, you would have a mansion on about 50 acres. You may own an entire city block for that. Moment. Yes. You, yeah, probably. <laughs> so. And uh, So, uh, what's funny is, though, is how relative things are. So, I told you guys we were staying in Menlo Park. If you look it up, it's very close to Facebook. It's very beautiful. Lots of huge trees. Just a great place to live. It was about 70 degrees while it was 99 here and 100. Last week here in Texas, it was 70 degrees. It, the wind's blowing right off the bay. It feels great. Great place. But the house here in Tyler would probably cost about two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars. Sure. Um, it's built kind of like old school Spanish style, but it's like a trailer. It wasn't much wider than your garage, John, but really long. Right. And so what they had done is they'd taken half of it and kind of made a duplex out of it. So they rent it out on Airbnb the other half. I gotcha. know how much it costs because we looked up property house values. Sure. And if that one was worth Six point five million. The one next door is probably worth about twenty. Wow! Because this was not a big house, but sure. I just thought, uh, if you want to know, the mortgage on a six point five million dollar house is about twenty four thousand a month. Whoa! So how? Uh, so somebody from California, please explain the math to me, because I don't know. Even if you're a sports star, I don't know how you afford. And that's not a lavish house. This is average house. Right. You know. You're getting now, that Facebook money. Yeah, they're, they're definitely, um, well, the guy that uh, worked for Google, he worked at home. He was a young guy, uh, and his mother lived there, and they rented out. But that's probably why they rent out a lot of their house sure. is to help pay for Offset this the cost. mortgage. But it's actually a lot cheaper to stay Airbnb if you go out there than it is to stay at a hotel, which is about three or $400 a night. Wow. So, uh, gasoline price was... Um, if you can find a station, which is weird, because here in Texas, every... Corner you, has you, one. Yeah, but, you know, well, who owns those stations? People with houses. They're, I mean, right. there's just not... You have to Google where to get gas. Right. When I found gas, it was $3.83 a gallon. It's about three sixty three. I mean, two sixty three here. here. Right. So, a dollar twenty more. But, I mean, they have um, taxes on. Yeah. They have higher taxes on. Oh, I'm gas. sure. They have tax a lot of higher taxes on everything. So anyway, guys, I just thought that was funny that it was actually the most expensive house I ever stayed in, the number one most expensive house, but it probably was about 140, 150 on the nice house. Right. Wasn't anything special. It just was that much. So uh, we are starting a fundraiser to uh, try to move our houses to California. <laughs> Uh, because we are going to become instant millionaires. All we need is a spot of land. There you go. That would be hard. <laughs> that, would be that would be hard and expensive to find out there, though. There you go. So, okay. Well, Tim, I think that was a. I think that was a great story. Yeah. Thanks for telling us now, Tim. Before we get on to the movie and TV talk, because that's the okay. next thing. Uh, we have a couple of things in here. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, John says, uh, you know, it's nice to see the product before you buy it. I miss that as aspect of purchasing something and that's mm -hmm. true with things like with retailers like toys r us going away tim you know try before you buy see before you buy is not really a thing right right so uh let's see and you know vulture capitalists youtube punk gives us a definition they're just in it to uh let's see they're um they're there just to fire sale everything basically milk out every last dollar before dumping it you know and um you know uh, there you go so um austin says how do i get the 60 hertz hum out of my machine and a lot of times uh austin if you've got a lot of hum in your machine it's a grounding issue mm -hmm. of some sort it could be that you don't have your game properly grounded to your outlet it could be that there's not proper grounding from your board to you know to a ground area in your cabinet but a lot of times when you're getting hums 
uh, it's usually something with a grounding issue. More than likely. Or you could just have some bad audio caps or something. Or could a speaker. Could have that as well. Or an audio amplifier issue. If yes. you have an audio amp in your game. Yeah, you know, there, it could be several things. Uh, in Pac-Man, Tim, we've talked about the fuse holder, actually. Uh-huh. A bad fuse holder can cause that kind of thing. So, I mean, just to let you know. Uh, it depends on the game, but in a lot of times, it's going to be a grounding issue of some sort. Let's see what else. More um, comments. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. YouTube Punk says 24K a month. Yeah. Insane in the membrane. Yes. There you go. So, Paul says hi. Hi, Paul. Hey, Paul. Thanks for being here. So, um, John says build up like the stacks. Oh, build up. <laughs> so, just keep building up. <laughs> I thought of that. Yeah, that is go. the future of California. <laughs> Speaking of building up, we're going to talk about Ready Player One. And, you know, that's right. going to have the stacks, too. So, there you go. Uh, is there. Any instantly noticeable differences between a Dynamo HS3 and HS4 besides size? I don't think so. Um, I'm not, man, I can't, I couldn't tell you without probably looking at the two of them. If yeah. I looked at them, I could tell you. It's hard for me to know just right off the top of my head. Dynamo, of course, generic cabinets, 10 that they made, but they made several models, HS3, HS4 included in those, but I'm not sure if there's any, any difference. That's how I tell them apart. I would say that was, I would say that'd be the first thing I would look at is the difference in the size. Size, the exactly. One. So there you go. Um, let's see. In Cali for cheap land. LOL. <laughs> John says. So there you go. So I think we're caught up on the live chat. So uh, we're going to have some people time in. We're moving to our movie and TV talk. We're about to wrap it up here, Tim. But let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. Uh, Tim, mentioned you... the stacks. What a transition. Exactly. There you go, the stacks. So uh, speaking of stacks, Ready Player One. Tim, I saw it. Oh, you finally saw it. I finally saw it. Now, you gave us a review of this a couple months back uh-huh. when you saw it in the movie theater. And you said it was really, 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 really good. I liked it. And you liked it yeah. a lot. And um, I liked it a lot, too. But at the same time, I didn't feel like it was like memorable. Does that make ah. a sense? So it's like I liked the movie itself, but I kind of felt like the story was very generic. Yeah. Sci-fi. It's like sci-fi, bunch of misfits, and save the day. Right. You know, I mean, which, look, it was good. It was fun. I enjoyed it. But it's kind of like a popcorn flick. You know, uh-huh. like I'll watch it and I'm done with it. The question yeah. is, will you buy it the first day it comes out? Maybe. I mean, I'm kind so, of on know, the fence, you know? I mean, That's like, kind of how I am. Yeah. I'm like, I really liked it at the time, but right. then do I really want to watch it over and over? You see, and that's I don't the know. thing. I don't know it's if It's enjoyable. I, I've now, if you haven't seen it, worth. you should see it. Yeah. Okay? It's worth a rental. So, right. you know, go to your Redbox. Or, well, it's not on Redbox yet, but you can get it on HD Digital. Um, you know, do an HD Digital rental of it or get it from your Redbox. You can do that. Uh-huh. Um, but I don't know if it's worth a purchase. It's a good movie, but like you said, I don't know how many times I'm going to watch it. Right. I mean, who knows? So, but fun a movie, great concept. A lot of 80s references. Right, <laughs> um, but the reason we talked about the stacks is because, of course, uh, all of their living is stacked right. up there. So um, you'll see it if you watch the movie at the very beginning. But um, now, Tim, I want to go to a movie that I actually really liked. Okay. More than Ready Player One, I'd say Death Wish. Wow. Have you seen or heard of Death Wish? I've not watched it. Okay. Uh, do you know what it's about? It. Yes. It's about Bruce Willis shooting people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I thought going in. I'm like, this movie's about Bruce Willis a shooting, shooting people. A lot of guns. Okay. It is about Bruce Willis shooting people. Okay. But it has a story. Oh. <laughs> like, hit me over the head with a broom, Tim. Wow. I, who would have thought that a movie about Bruce Willis shooting people would have a story? Now, Die Hard. Okay. Die Hard has a pretty good story. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to, I mean, I think it's pretty good. Death Wish has a similarly good story, and it develops its characters. Okay, some of it's kind of corny, kind of cheesy. Yeah. But here's the deal. The whole thing takes place in Chicago is the one thing you may not know. And what goes on in Chicago all the time? Murders. Well, it's a lot of gun shooting. Yeah. A lot of people dying, a lot of murders. And so that's kind of the backdrop for what's been going on. Okay. And he's a doctor. Okay. And he sees people come in being shot. Ah. And that plays into the story. Okay. And it, I mean, it has a story. Who would have thought? I was just watching it to see Bruce Willis shoot people. And then I discovered a story, and dude, like, I almost got a little teary-eyed. Wow, it even. Good, huh? Like, it was a good story. Okay. So, I highly recommend Death Wish. You can't watch it with your kids, okay? okay. It is Bruce Willis shooting people, okay? okay? And it is violent, okay? But it is a great movie. Put the kids to bed. Watch it yourself. I highly recommend it. All right. I, and you know, when it came out, Tim, I wanted to see it. Uh-huh. Now I wish I would have saw it in the theater. Wow. So, with Ready Player One, I'm like, I'm glad I waited until, until uh, it came out on digital. Okay. But with Death Wish, I wish I would have saw it in the theater. We'll it would have been a, a fantastic experience. So there you go. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, YouTube Punk, Die Hard is the best Christmas movie. I agree. Uh-huh, love yes. YouTube. Uh, you love Die Hard at Christmas. It's best. Uh-huh. Um, John says, have you guys seen Lost in Space series on Netflix? I liked it. Yes. You have. I have not. Not. I've heard good things. I do like it. So there you go. Yeah, I'm waiting on season two to come out. So I'm going to talk about two TV shows real quick. 
The Americans and Deception both had their finales. Both will never be on again. Okay, but for two different things. The Americans actually got to finish their story out season six, uh, and the Deception got one season, and it's done. Okay. Like, it's not coming back. So the mm. Americans finale was fantastic. Okay. It may be one of my favorite finales of a TV show ever. Wow. There is a 15-minute section in the finale that may be the best 15 minutes of television I've ever seen. Wow. Is this on Netflix? It is on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. You can watch every episode on Amazon Prime. I believe the the new season is coming out July 27th on Amazon. Like, you can watch it with your Prime membership. Gotcha. But you have to watch the whole thing. Okay. You cannot pick it up in the middle. It's like Cobra Kai. You You just gotta watch it all. You gotta start at the beginning. It, it, there is violent parts, it has language, it has violence, it has nudity, it has a lot of stuff in it. But the story it tells, all that stuff, it's not like that stuff is gratuitous. All that stuff is part of the story. Okay. There's a reason why that stuff's in there. It's not ah, like we just threw it, we just right. threw stuff in there. Just to make it all right. Exactly. No, okay. it is It is part of the story. But if, for those of you guys who don't know, the Americans is about two Russian spies that infiltrate America. They're taught to become Americans. They have a family here. But... Their kids and stuff think they're just a normal couple that runs a travel agency. Wow. When really at night, they're going out and doing all this Russian spy stuff. Okay. They're sleeping with people. They're getting secrets. They're, uh, I mean, like, so, so I mean, it is fantastic. But fr- they set seeds that they end up paying off in season six in the first season. Wow. So that's why you can't just pick it up. You need to watch the okay. whole thing. Okay, watch the whole thing. But the finale has probably the best 15 minutes of television I've ever seen. Gotcha. And it is, I mean, the finale is an hour and a half long. But there's 15 minutes in, in that hour and a half. Worth watching. Okay. I'll put it on my right my watch list then. So it is It is fantastic. Watch all of it. Okay. So it is, there are times when it is tough to watch. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to tell you one scene in particular in the whole series that's the toughest to watch is when uh, the, the woman uh, kills, kills somebody because, you know, the Russian spies kills uh-huh. him or kills her and shoves her into a suitcase. Wow. And you hear every bone crack... Ah, I okay. mean, so that part is probably the worst that it ever gets. Okay, Interesting. that part is really tough. Okay, but all the rest of it, it's worth going through all that to get to the finale. The gotcha. Finale was, oh, okay, it was and in fact, I want to go back and just watch the finale like over and over again. Wow, I mean, it was that good. So I loved it. It was great. So, and Deception, of course, was about a magician that helped yes. the FBI solve crime. Um, I thought the concept was great. I thought the show was good, but it didn't make the ratings. Um, you can watch the whole thing as season one, and it was pretty decent. Uh, I wish they would have brought it back because I think they had a lot of story to tell. But, you know, man, uh, networks are brutal. A lot, of, a lot of competition exactly. out there There's right just now. a lot out there. So Deception didn't make the cut, but it it's was not good. ABC, NBC, and CBS anymore. It was an ABC. Yeah, it was an ABC I mean, show. Some... I mean, and it was produced by the same people that produced a lot of the other shows I watched, but just couldn't get the audience. Mm. But it was good. So, Tim... You saw a movie that I've been wanting to see. Okay. Solo, a Star right. Wars well, story. Well, I won't spoil it for you. Now, I have heard very, very, very mixed reviews about this. I've heard just kind of like Last Jedi. Yeah. I've heard people who loved it and people who've hated it. So, what do you think? I'm, I, I'll be honest. I'm kind of in the middle. Okay. Have if, you seen if, if have I you had, seen more than once? No. Just um, once. But I would go see it again. Okay. And uh, I would like to go see it again. So, you'll have to let me know if you want to go see it. I'm, I'm interested. Um, I like, I mean, these are no spoilers. It explains a lot, like how he met Chewbacca, how he uh, got the Millennium Falcon. You know, he always talked about winning in a card game and stuff. And so you get to see all those scenes, how they they came together. Um, But like I said, no no big spoiler alerts. It's not the typical Star Wars lightsaber fighting, not even a lot of battle. You know, it's more story. Now, had I never seen Star Wars before, I'd probably say, that was a cool movie. That was awesome, you know. Uh, compared to other Star Wars, it's like, okay, no. But now, at some point, you got to say, what do we expect? I mean, Now, there's like, a good chance it's not going to make back its production. Yeah, I've heard. And I don't know if you knew that. So, yeah, I mean, here's the deal. Not. And, you know, a lot of people have been talking about this, and I'm going to talk about it too. Last Jedi was just okay. Yeah. And, I mean, it was good. I mean, good. Right. But, I mean, I wasn't, like, blown away by it. And right. I think that I'm starting to get it because of that. I'm getting a little fatigued. Yeah, maybe. It's like I don't know if I want to see another well, Star Wars movie. But for a the while. but the criticisms I heard was that the kid was a horrible actor and all that stuff. And I'm like, I thought he nailed because he yeah Harrison's Ford mannerisms. I'd say kid and kind of you know quirk you know and kind of cocky. And I thought it, he wasn't a great actor. Okay, but he played that part. Young Harrison Ford great to a t huh i thought it was 
spot on. To right. be honest with you, that's kind of how I would expect him to be at that point. But that, of course, is just my opinion. It was a very entertaining uh, guys' night. We went and we had a good time. So, you know, it's kind of like there was a lot of other movies I could have went and saw. I'm glad I saw that one. There you go. So, you know, it's like, but is it my favorite? It's probably one of my least favorite Star Wars movies. But then again, it's a Star Wars movie. I mean, we're still making them. I think it's cool. Well, I am glad that we're still making them. But I, I like but I said, I do feel like overboard. right. I feel like Last Jedi kind of turned me off a little bit. But it, you know but it told the story. You know, like I said, but not like you didn't already know it. Right. But I mean, you know, just you know, the fact that Chewbacca is over a hundred years old. You know right. that. Right. You know, it's like, Stuff like that. And that's not totally spoiling. I'm just saying that you know, he's like, dang, you're that old. You know, and and how the you know, they've kind of become friends. They really are good friends. There is a a weird part in the movie with Lando Calrissian. I won't go into that. I'll just say that I don't understand that part of it. You'll you'll see it or you've now, heard about it. Kind of kind of says you know um, what I'm thinking. They're suffering from Star Wars fatigue. I do feel like that because I mean we were used to not getting well, any movies for a for while. A year right, or for two, years, and now. Right. It, it just feels like the last one just was out at exactly. the theater. and it was. And we got another one coming out. I know. So, it's but, like, I, I don't need all the Star a, Wars. But it's such a side story. It's kind of like when you love Cheers, but you like the Fraser show. Right. Because it's like, oh, okay, well. But maybe that's the thing, is that with Marvel, every movie builds to the next one. You know what I'm yeah, saying? They're all right. sequential. But with these, it's like we have unnecessary movies. We don't have main, we have kind of off-canon and main-canon movies. You don't have to see the off-canon movies to yeah. still get it and maybe people realize that maybe so. so and you already knew this I think it's that going back you know it's going back you know it's kind of right. like we, are, we we you know what the ending's going to be right. I mean you already know yeah so I'm going to read a couple there's of a cameo in the end that I liked nice so John says uh, Rogue Rogue One was decent I thought I actually liked Rogue One mm-hmm. like I, I liked that one it was good I had no problem with it so uh, let's read a couple other things have you guys okay Lost in Space Sci-Fi Nut um, Westworld. It's hard to follow this season. You know, um, I have not watched Westworld, but I know the concept of it. I've heard good things. I have things. not either, and I've, it's kind of on my radar to start. It just seems like every time I go to start it, I'm, I'm into something else. Yeah. So, uh, But I've heard good things about it. I just haven't I haven't gotten into it yet. I don't have the premium cable channels. So, I mean, you know, having kids around, it's not good to have those anyway. <laughs> you so, have AT&T, though, right? No, I do have AT&T cell. Well, then you, get, um, you can get free HBO and watch it on Prime. I didn't realize that. Something like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Talk to your AT and T people. You get free HBO. I don't like to talk to them. Uh, they that's annoy true. me. <laughs> but you get free HBO though. We'll see. Um, okay. YouTube Punk says, "What do you guys think of the price hike for Amazon Prime? Twenty more dollars is steep." I agree. When I joined Amazon Prime, it was seventy nine dollars. It was only the free shipping. I felt like it was worth it at that point. Um, but the thing you have to realize is that it was seventy nine dollars just free shipping. Now it's a hundred and nineteen. Right, and you get music streaming, you get video streaming, you get free shipping, you get free Kindle books. There's a lot more value to it than there used to be. So I do, I mean, I do think, well, I the, do think it's a good value. The still. thing is, I, I don't may, like that they went up on the price. Yeah, the thing is, I may go for. Then you think they would grandfather people in, right? I like that. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, oh, you're lo- we'll give you a lawyer. Netflix hasn't hasn't been well. They no, did the, the last time, Netflix, but they haven't the last. They couple. need to do that again, right? But. What it may force me to do is instead of paying it one time yearly, it'll probably will go to a monthly, monthly subscription. Monthly's more expensive though, you know that, right? Yeah. Like, in, but I mean, at least you're but, paying a monthly. Yeah, it's right? like a monthly fee, but right, exactly. I understand. From a payment standpoint, it makes it makes it easier. You know, I like to budget. Yeah, I've still only been a Prime member for about three months, so I've got a ways. Oh, you got a long time. I've been a Prime man. I've got I've run laps around you. Yeah. When it comes to Prime membership, uh, Louis says, "I think it. I think it's too much. If you spend forty dollars." Or so you get free shipping most of the time anyway. And that is true. If you're only looking at for shipping, it's right. not worth it. Yeah, and did you notice that Walmart.com now offers yep. free two day ship free two day shipping, no membership. Yes, exactly. So if you haven't ever shopped at Walmart.com, you can literally buy just about anything there. You can buy a coffin there. No, there you go. Uh, you YouTube Punk says Westworld. I like season Google one. Google that or research go. that one. Walmart.com, look for your casket. <laughs> YouTube Punk says I like season one better. My wife can follow season two but i can't so there you what go. season what is that it's season two of westworld oh westworld, westworld. okay um yeah i'm leaning that way too youtube punk says on amazon prime nobody else wants to comment on solo i was wondering uh, what they, they need to do a boba it. fett movie which i would see a boba fett movie i'm a big boba fett fan at uh, my desk at work has a little boba fett bobblehead on it so i would like to see that um let's see youtube punk says i'm suffering from star wars fatigue you and me yeah, both maybe I mean, so. that's usually how it is 
Um, let's see. That Rogue One was better than Last Jedi. I did too. Um, let's see. With Sprint, you get free Hulu. Huh. So I'm on the Hulu plus Spotify deal. Oh. I get Hulu and Spotify for 13 bucks a month. Okay. So if you're a Spotify member, uh, you can go to a certain link and I can post that for you. But you can get Hulu. You can get them both together. Spotify bills you. You can get them both together for twelve ninety nine a month. Here, here's a, a fun, a fun, fair question. You know, we most of us are on Hulu, Netflix, and all that stuff because we cut the cable cord. But at some point, if you add up all the monthly memberships, pretty soon it's going to be more than cable was. Is it bad that I have cable and all those things? Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. What do you watch on cable? What do I watch you can't on cable? See on the other baseball ones. games. Baseball games. I mean, I could probably get a live well, TV, uh, a live TV service, but I, I have watch, Sling, so I get right. The I could do that, but the problem is, is that my but wife. But if you, yeah, if you add all that together, I bet I'm paying more than cable now, which was my reason for cutting it in right. the beginning. Um, my wife likes the local channels too. Yeah, you know, I mean, watch so locals, news. you know, you don't get that on Sling. You know, true, you can true. get them on, on some of them around here, but not all of them. So I got uh, an let's antenna. See, what do you guys think a good pinball theme would be? And YouTube Punk says Wonder Woman Predator. Um, there was a Predator. Right. So I mean, they're well. I mean, I mean, they've done like I've seen uh, who did, who. What was the Predator one that we played? Well, was it was a, a home. Was that was a, a home? Brew? Brew? I thought yeah. that was one from like an independent game company. I can't remember. Yeah, maybe. But... John says Willy Wonka, Goonies, Toy Story, um, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice would be well, sweet. Yeah. They need a Yoda backstory movie. What do you think about that? that? That's from Louie. That might be a little more interesting. There you go. Like a little baby Yoda. So, pinball themes. You know, I have been trying to advocate for a UFC one for a long time. I'm a big UFC fan. Too. That, that I'd like be. to see a UFC pinball theme, but uh, they just don't seem to be interested in that. So, um, you know, and I think it's because it's a younger demographic that likes UFC. And let's face it, guys, people buying pinball machines now are people in their 40s and 50s. Right. And so a lot of those people aren't necessarily in the UFC. So... You know, I mean, it just is what it is. A lot of the younger guys are into it. And, you know, 50s, 60s, you know, those are the people buying pinball machines now. That's why you see Iron Maiden, ACDC. That's why you mm-hmm. see those a lot of times. So, But um, anything else? Oh, somebody said Goonies. So. Goonies would be a good... <laughs> YouTube okay. Punk says, uh, I'm loaded. Cable and Netflix, Hulu. <laughs> I have Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, and Cable. Yeah. I've got those three. Now, on Cable, I have the basic, basic, basic package. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, just enough to get me by with my baseball games, basically. Um, but our cable operator really has a great deal for cable and internet. And yeah. so, I mean, it's not it's not bad. And then, uh, and then Netflix, and, and I have Spotify, too, because of the Spotify and Hulu deal. So, I have Spotify, Hulu, um, and then Netflix and Amazon Prime. So, I mean... But even with all that, I can't find what I was watching, what I want to watch. <laughs> right. So, you know how it is. So, um, well, now that the Americans has ended. Yeah, Smurfs. Exactly, Smurfs. G1 Transformers. Uh, people saying pinball themes. How about an American's pinball machine? I want that. <laughs> <laughs> they did one for the Sopranos. Right. 24. Man, I need a 24 pinball machine. I love yeah, 24. That's a so, fun pinball. Yeah, I mean, Game of Thrones. In our TV show, they got its own pinball machine. Uh, Walking Dead. Walking Dead got its own pinball machine. There's been several. So, I mean, we've had several uh, TV show pinball themes. Tim, are you about spent? Because I'm feeling yeah, that way. I'm getting there. Okay, I think I'm done. I mean, unless you guys have something else for us, we're leaving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, Tim, one I'm more out. show. One more show we forgot to I'm mention. I've been eating. Manhunt. Oh, you've been oh, eating. Oh, Manhunt. Well, yeah, I've been snacking. Yeah, I've been seen snacking. that. Manhunt. That's the last thing on the outline. If you have, if you like documentaries and you okay. haven't seen Manhunt, I do. Uh, I like documentaries. Uh, it's about the Unabomber, and oh. it's totally reenacted, but it's great acting. You'll notice a lot of the actors in there. Really good, very good acting, and uh, it really tells the whole story of the, how he was caught by an FBI agent who was a little uh, autistic, kind of quirky about um, his methods and stuff, um, and so it, it's very, 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 very interesting, um, and uh, if you want to watch it's about uh, six or eight parts, so it's... Netflix? Yeah, it's on uh, Netflix. It's called Manhunt. It's about the Unabomber. It gives a whole lot to the story that I never knew. You know that this went on for like 15 years. I did not realize that. Yeah, it was back in the 80s up until almost 2000 before he got caught. This dude was, talk about terror, this guy was terrorizing for years. Golly. And they couldn't figure out how to catch him. And I think today, most time a package comes to my house, I know, oh, I ordered something the other day. It's coming in. I'll tell my sure. wife. But, you know, now, back in the day, I was like, oh, I got a got package, package, bam, right. I'm, it explodes on me. You didn't get that track. And, um, and you almost even understand, uh, gets into the mind of the guy and what he was really after and what he wanted to accomplish. 
and the FBI agent actually uses that against him to trick him. Um, just to, without giving away the show, he basically uh, was from, uh, watch the episode called Wooder, W-U-D-D-E-R. It's the best episode. It's so good uh, because he was from Jersey. He would say, you got any water? I want some water to drink. And they would make fun of him. And he basically, the, the Unabomber made a big manifesto. And he says, you know, everybody says something funny or diff- different. You know, I talk from Texas. When I'm in California, they immediately go, oh, where are you from? Right. They know I'm not from California. Sure. You guys know by listening to that I'm not from New York or something, right? Exactly. right? So he, he looks for words and phrases and picks those things out that in, determines this guy grew up in Chicago. I mean, he profiles. He's right. a profiler. When it was before... It was popular. Right, before we and, uh, and they proves that he could find out this guy grew up in Chicago. He knew all this stuff about him without ever knowing and meeting him. And he says, you know what? If we uh, talk like that and tell him how he talks, he talks. Like, he can't just talk like that some of the time. He talks like that all the time, and somebody will recognize that. Right. And if you know the story, it was his own family that turned him in uh, because they did recognize wow. the way he talked in, in the writings. Yeah, and they released it. Um, it also goes back to uh, the pressure that was put on the FBI and Janet Reno at the sure. time, oh, yeah. right after Waco, to solve this case. Sure. And so it's really, really good. Uh, so if you see somebody said, "Man, man, how is man, that? that was good." Yeah, you need. It's just really. I, I love history, and I like the because uh, I remember growing up during that time. You're afraid to open any package, sure. you know. Uh, and so it really explains a lot of what happened behind the scenes. So you got me, you, when you said documentary though, you got me on a, uh, a couple other things. Toys That Made Us, there's four new yes, episodes if you haven't it. seen them. Um, it's, uh, there's one on Transformers. I saw that Hello one. Hello Kitty. Um, where are the other two on? Uh, uh, on Lego. Lego. The Lego one was really good. Yes, it was. Very interesting. And I forget what the other one was on. So but, I have, Actually, I saw those three. Okay. I saw Transformers. And I saw Barbie. There's a Barbie one. Well, the Barbie one was that last. That was before, yeah, right? Yeah, before. And, um, Lego, Lego, Hello Kitty, Hello Transformers. Kitty. Transformers. Those are the three that... that um, There's one more, and I haven't yeah, watched it. I that's why I haven't... It so, uh, but all of those are really good. So if you haven't uh-huh. seen The Toys That Made Us, that's another one to show. Um, I believe there's new seasons of Luke Cage and Glow coming out on Netflix. Yes, Glow and is so, coming back out. So both those shows That'll I enjoyed the first season of, and so I'm looking forward to the second season. Uh, Tim, one more thing before we leave. What would be a good musical band theme for Pinball? And we have Queen, Journey, Def Leppard. Is there anything else that you can add to that? Mm, I, I agree with the Journey. I think that would be a cool one. That can I throw would, the Bee Gees out there? The Bee Gees, maybe, <laughs> maybe. I, so you're, I think you, people you need really 70 band, seventies bands. It seems like so. Right. Yeah, it seems like you need to cross 60s, that. 70s. That's why Journey kind of goes seventies, eighties, and 80s. above. So maybe Journey. I like that one. Um, boy, yeah, band bands are popular though. They're they're good theme, pinball things. And they've got kind of that. Every time it comes out, everybody's like, oh, and then all of a sudden they sell a lot of them. Exactly. So it's like, well, they always sell a lot of them. Right. There's enough fans of everything, so. But, um, you know, maybe I, would it be cool to have, um, let's think of maybe a 90s. Uh, what about a ZZ Top? Yeah, ZZ Top. You know, I think people like ZZ Top. It's I like, wouldn't buy one, but I mean, I understand right? I, ZZ Top's pretty, pretty cool. I mean, I understand people who like ZZ Top. I was trying to think. Mm-hmm. What's they saying? Uh, it says, Mr. Arcade Repair Tips will call tonight. You're going to call to Gary Stern tonight? I am. Yes. We're going to. You got him on speed dial, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll call him up. No kidding, we could call Jersey Jack. Yeah, we could call Jersey Jack. <laughs> like, we'll get Jack to do a theme pin, uh, yeah, a, a music, music theme, theme pin. pin. <laughs> we'll be the first ones. He'll, we planted that bug in his ear. There you go. So, uh, uh, let's see. Um, let's. See. We got some talented people in the chat room we over really here, do. and a lot so. of you guys. We we actually went up after the after uh, in viewership after the uh, live show was over in the after show. I noticed that. So I was, Maybe some oh, people so are just Louis said, I'd love to hear We Are the Champions um, playing, you know, for the Queen. Yeah. I think that'd be nice. Or another so. one bites the dust when I lose, drain my ball. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I think right. we're going to call it, we're, we're going to call it a night here. This is done. So we want to thank everybody for being with us and staying through the live show and hearing Tim's, uh, hearing all of Tim's uh, uh, stories from California. That was really Yeah, fun. you don't, uh, you don't get a medal for staying this whole time, but you deserve one. <laughs> you so. deserve a medal. Thank you for. <laughs> Makes me think of Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph 2. 
2 trailer out, too. You guys yeah, need to check that out. But, you know, remember, he was always after the metal. Yep. Always after <laughs> the metal. So there you go. But uh, anyway, Thank guys, you guys. Thanks for having us here tonight. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next month. Tim, what did we say? The July 5th. 5th. So after Independence Day, we want to know all your plans. So you guys have a great Independence Day. And if you're here in the States, and if you're not, uh, we'll talk to you on July 5th. But we'll see you guys all later. Thanks for hanging in for the after show. And have a good night. Adios. Out. O-W-T. I'm out.